October 10th, 2018. I want to begin by calling this meeting to order. Uh, the first thing is go to item two is going to confirm future meeting dates. This board will meet at the special town meeting on October 22nd, 23rd, and 25th, potentially if we go three nights. And there will be a board of select and retreat on October 27th, 2018 from 9.30 to 11.30. Is that all right? Are they on the time on that all right? Yes. I know I had originally said 9 to 1. Mr. Farrington asked for it, so I went 9.30 to 11.30. That's okay. So on that, just while we're on that subject, if maybe by Monday or Tuesday, if everyone could just get to me or to Jen issues that they want to talk about so we can condense it into that. Two hours is a very short window of time. Um, item three, citizen speak. If, do we have anyone for citizen speak tonight? Can you just raise your hand? Oh, a whole bunch. Okay, so if you could come up one at a time. I'll start with the gentleman to my extreme right and just please sign in your address and uh, state your name and where you live. Thank you. The floor is yours. Yes, sir. You surely yes. may. The seat is yours. Good evening. My name is Tony Ciceroni. I live at 16 Sheldon Street, Milton. And I am here to request the board support turfing the fields at Milton High School and behind Pierce Middle School with lights, uh, multi lined. Uh, for multiple sport use, youth and high school. Just repeat, which field you're referring to? The Milton High School upper field, where the softball and the uh, baseball field is, the lower field, okay. and behind Pierce Middle School. Is that it? Do you want to? Approved? <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that was easy, thank you. Thanks. We should run for select. <laughs> You'd be frustrated though in a week. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions? I'd love to answer it. So I can't. Well, so, so, yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I was I, just going to say. Ahead. So, so the, the, there are some lights down on those lower fields. Does this mean expanding the lights? Is so that, the lower field, we like to turf, turf over the grass, oh, turf, turf, okay. turfed field, yep. uh, multi-lined with uh, light additions to the upper stanchions okay. that sh shine down. We'd like to turf the upper field from the softball field to the baseball field and have it multi-lined for multiple sport use with lights added. And we'd like to turf behind Pierce Middle School multi-lined for multiple sport use. What kind of turf is it? Is it some kind of, I mean, is it? Same, to the, same as the high school. The Brooks expensive field. kind. Okay. <laughs> the very expensive kind. The same as they have currently have yes. at the high school. Yes. Okay. Um. Since anyone else? Can anyone else have a question? Can I, can I ask just a couple questions? Yes, sir. Have you been anywhere else with this first? Only because the fields are not under our jurisdiction. I just, have you been to the park department or the school department with this request at all? Or? Not officially, no. So we're the first stop on this trolley that you're on. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. If I um, might, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ciceroni and myself had a conversation last year yeah. to engage this. It was late in the capital improvement process and it didn't get on the docket, so. Uh, okay. This is a good time to get it uh, on the docket as that group is set to meet uh, in the next two weeks. So I just got to, so I'm, my daughter plays and my wife coaches, so I'm familiar with the lower field, I'm, I'm familiar with that field you're referring to. The upper field, you mean the lower field way down by Meyer Avenue Bridge, is that what you're referring to? Uh, so, uh, adjacent to Donovan Baseball Field? I think, I think, uh, I think closest to home Inc. When you get on the hill to, to the right, oh, okay. down below Piatelli, right below Piatelli, mm -hmm. it's used for football, right? Yeah. Am I correct? Correct. So that's one field. And then you, did you say three fields? Yes, sir. So that's one field. The second field <coughs> is which field? So the upper field at Milton High School, yeah. where the girls' softball field is, yeah. out to the baseball field. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, request that turfed and multi lined. I think we could get at least three full-size, over 100-yard fields there. Okay. And the third one is Pierce, is the old, is the field, what, what it was the Milton High School field behind Pierce Middle School? Yes, sir. Correct? Okay. Tony, can you speak a little bit about how potentially turfing the field could lead to the town potentially hosting tournaments um, and generate a little bit of revenue for the town? Sure. So I believe that the turf would eliminate some maintenance costs year to year, uh, especially when it comes to... Uh, Everything five or ten years, we have to do those fields over. I believe that turfing the field would allow us to host outside um, clubs, tournaments, right. tournaments um, and obviously 
My goal as a youth sport member would be to uh, provide it for the youth sports of the town and the high school, but I also think that it would be a revenue source for the off periods for like club soccer or club lacrosse, things like that. I get that. Only my last comment, I, I definitely think you should take this to the park commissioners as well. Do you agree? I mean, Correct. Yep. That's who would generate the, the request. Right. This is going to be their request. Program. This would be their capital request. But I think you definitely want to do that. I will. Okay. Anybody? In? Go ahead. Just, do you have an um, itemization of the costs? Or, or at some point, I guess you will, when, you, when it goes to capital? Uh, we don't, but we're currently working on that. Okay. 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 Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Again. Yeah. Thanks. So before I go, is there anyone else on this subject? Okay. Who else? Who else? Was, I saw three hands. I think for citizen speak. Attorney Cochran. My neighbor. Bring anyone you want. The floor is hers. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and Good um, evening. members of the board. Thank you. My name is Ned Corcoran. I reside at 70 Morton Road, and I'm with Nancy Kelly, who is a neighbor, and she resides at 7 Morton Road. Um, I had planned to come here to speak in opposition to question one, which is on the ballot. I thought it was important to speak to the citizens of the town on television, speaking really as a member of the Board of Overseers for the hospital, uh, and would tend to speak sort of from the hospital's perspective. And I could talk about budget impacts and um, staffing <coughs> impacts and the like. But I was walking up the street the other day, and Nancy grabbed me and said, how do you like my sign? And I said, Oh, the, the sign that said nurses for no. I said, tell me about it. And she basically hit me over the head with a two by four and all the reasons why she thought as a nurse it was not appropriate to vote yes. So I said, well, you need to come and speak because you're in the middle of it, a lot more effective than I could ever be uh, as, a, as someone just speaking on behalf of the leadership of the hospital. So I thought I would introduce Nancy and give her an opportunity to go forward. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, like Ned said, my name is Nancy Kelly. I live at 7 Morton Road. Um, I have been a bedside nurse at Mass General Hospital for 19 years, and currently I'm also an adjunct professor of nursing at St. Anselm College. Um, I have a few notes prepared, so if you bear with me. Um, question no seeks to limit the number of patients assigned to each registered nurse, both in hospitals and other healthcare facilities across the Commonwealth. On election day, I plan to vote no, and I have many reasons why. I hope you'll join me in voting no. The law um, will require mandated staffing ratios in every unit in the hospital across the state. A one-size-fits-all bill does not take into account the patients and the amount of care that they require, and that that varies from unit to unit and hospital to hospital. Patients in our community hospitals require a very different level of care than those in our large academic teaching hospitals. You may have seen recent ads on TV that report 86% of nurses will vote yes on question one. Please note that this percentage was based on a poll of 300 nurses. I checked the Board of Registration website today and there are nearly 150,000 registered nurses in the state of Massachusetts. So this ad is an attempt to mislead the general public into thinking that the majority of nurses support this law. If passed, the law would require that ratios be implemented beginning January 1st, which is less than two months after the election. With the current nursing shortage in Massachusetts of over 5,000 nurses, where will we find the staffing to meet these ratios? It is expected that hospitals would need nearly 6,000 nurses. As a nurse educator, I can tell you that there is no way that we can prepare nurses fast enough and adequately enough to fill these ratios. It will cause cuts to the number of clinical placements that we have for our student nurses, which are already at a premium. So how are we gonna educate these new nurses if we have no place for them to learn? We have students that flock to Boston from all over the country to learn in our wonderful teaching hospitals. A recent published study showed that the cost of implementation would be $1.3 billion for the first year and nearly a billion dollars every year after that. This would cause increased health care costs to patients and decreased funding to health care programs in our community. Which brings us to community hospitals like Milton um, B.I. Degres. 
Sadly, these community hospitals are the ones that are going to be hit most under this law. These hospitals will be unable to meet the requirements and may be forced to reduce the number of beds and even face closure. Community hospitals serve an important function in our healthcare system, and closures would cause more stress to an already overwhelmed system. Other consequences of this law include extended wait times in emergency rooms, reduced numbers of births on labor and delivery floors, and the closure of critically needed um, psychiatric beds and behavioral health programs. Um, to conclude, I ask you to remember that nurses know their patients best and know their needs best. I'm often the charge nurse on a very busy neurosurgery floor. I do not take a patient assignment so that I can assist other nurses in caring for their patients. I serve as a resource to newer staff members as well as to more experienced staff as we care for an incredibly challenging patient population. Passage of this law would take away the professional judgment to use our knowledge, expertise, and critical thinking to make the best possible care decisions based on our patients' needs. Nursing is often referred to as an art and a science. It is a delicate balance of ever-changing variables. Please allow nurses to make decisions that we feel are best for our patients. I hope that you will join me in voting no on question one on election day. Thank you. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go to item four on our agenda. I'm going to ask Stephen O'Donnell, the chairman of the Milton Historical Commission, to join us to present an update on the Milton Yard Club building located on Wharf Street. And you are more than welcome to be joined by your colleague, esteemed colleague, who can introduce herself. Good evening. Uh, thank you for giving us some time tonight. I am Steve O'Donnell, the chair of the Historical Commission. With me is Ellen Anzalone, one of our members. Uh, we're following up on a discussion we had in June uh, about the condition of the Yacht Club building, the former police lockup. Um, Ellen has sort of become a subcommittee of one um, following this, and uh, you may recall in June we sent you a um, photographic survey that Ellen had done as well as some comments from a structural engineer. And we've been kind of stymied on uh, how to get from here to where we want to be next. So I'll let Ellen explain what she's been doing. Okay. All right, thanks, Steve. Um, so I did, I really, I think stymied is the right word. Uh, I do know the public bid process a little bit because I do that in work. Um, but we're kind <coughs> of chicken and an egg thing. So we need to address the building because there's water getting in, as you will right. read from this report. So the there's the avenue of the typical procurement that you would form a committee, then you would get hire an engineer and, or an architect, and then they would go out for bids um, uh, with their drawings. We can go that route, but it's hard to put together a RFP when we don't know what's wrong with the building. So it could, and I spoke to the procurement officer uh, today actually, and she was she was helpful in saying that you could approach it as being a feasibility study and put out an RFP based on that. The comments that I had with Steve is that's a long process. And I think, personally, I think it needs to be addressed. Something needs to be done now. Or we can wait maybe till the spring and see if, see, um, if anything, any more deterioration happens to the building. Uh, but it's, there are, you know, there's, you saw the photos. There's no gutters. There's, there's areas uh, that have um, need repointing. The, the um, Yacht Club did have some work done. I've been by there recently, so they did address <coughs> some of the, the bricks hanging off the building. But it's, it's, the question is, is which avenue should be pursued for the procurement of the services of an engineer, <coughs> and then a mason. The, in a perfect world, if this was a, not a, a public process, you would hire a um, engineer, he'd do, he'd, and a mason, they would go to the building together and do the investigations together, and then come up with a, um, a detail of what needs to be done. Then you would go and get a price. Because, but because we are public, we can't do that, that smoothly. So there are, there is, uh, through the um, state, it is allowed to address a building that is in emergency need of care, and that's a, a judgment question that would be totally up to you. Um, is, is this 
an emergency. And can we do something now to keep the water out over the winter, keep the snow from accumulating where it shouldn't? Um, I th that's sort of it in a nutshell. It's just, it's chicken and an egg. What do you do? With there the are places on the front of the building with vegetation yeah. growing out of the joints between the bricks. Right. The upper left-hand corner of the front of the building. And if I can just quote a sentence very quickly out of the engineer's report from before, the approach we suggest is to engage a contractor who would explore the questionable items noted previously, all of which could be done in a little more than a week. So his estimate that to survey and find out what we need is a relatively short process, which in my mind can cost all kinds of money. Right. But the question to you is we need guidance on how to take that next step. So I think what you're referring to is sole source based on agency. If she's talking about, you're talking about 30B, not having to go out for an RFP or not having yeah. to. Yeah, and I only say that because um, it, that would be an avenue to go through if if we wanted to do something with the building this before the winter. Is the ceiling still? Is it 10,000? I don't know what your ceiling is. Is it? Might be 30,000 for sole source. On RFP, right? Yeah. Right. And my understanding is it was confirmed today with the procurement officer is that unlike architects, engineers, there's no limit. If you would go to, to, to uh, request services for an architect, that's limited uh, to t under $10,000. Right. You don't have to go up. That doesn't apply to structural you're, engineers. You're correct. That's true. Right. It does not. Um, so you're looking from guidance from us on You don't want to proceed. You want us to proceed. Well, I don't believe we have the authority. Right, the jurisdiction. Yeah, right, right. I agree. So this is so. A, we don't have any money. We don't right, believe I we have the authority to to enter into contract. You need money. I don't I have money. <laughs> um, so I'm just thinking out loud. Maybe we should have a conversation, even though it's not on the bills jurisdiction. Maybe to have that. Discussion between the town administrator and the director of consolidated facilities mm -hmm. just to get an. I mean, he would know. It sounds to me if it's in a week, it can't be that expensive a job. Well, well that's what I would think. Now, he's only saying to do the survey. Right. I mean, this, right. Later on, okay, that's a different situation. And two, op two possible options. One is just to do the emergency repairs to get you so that the building is sealed and not mm -hmm. leaking and mm -hmm. deteriorating, and then long term to look at something bigger yeah. and I'm thinking the short term one is the one Bill Ritchie. I had you know, a brief conversation with Bill today. I believe Miss Antalone spoke mm -hmm. with him. Oh I didn't speak to him directly. No. Okay, yeah. maybe he spoke to Arlene Zuniga yes, after I you think spoke. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We had a brief conversation and Bill's very familiar with the building and its failing condition. I mean uh, having yes. some experience of being responsible for municipal building here for a decade of my more than that. Um, that's how I would have proceeded if it, if it would happen to me. I think that's probably, this building kind of falls through the cracks because it, it's not under Bill's jurisdiction, but it is under our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to me, he's like our subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. I think he'd be the first one that I think we could talk to and then go from there. And I, it sounds to me though, if you're gonna get something in a week from an engineer, that this is not gonna be that big a job, at least the, the, the immediate concerns and then I believe from your last conversation here, if we were to do something long term or something bigger as far as the whole building, we might want to look at potentially some state grants or historical grants that we might be able to pursue. Am I correct on that? Am yes. I saying that correctly? Are there state grants too? Yes, if it were on the. Uh, I remember when anyone comes in and talks about money. If it were on the National Register, you are eligible That's right. for, but it for isn't. state grants. But it isn't. And that takes years. Right. But that's, that's the long term. Yeah. We're, really more concerned right now about the right. short term. So if, if everybody's all right, maybe we'll have Bill look at this ASAP and kind of get an idea where we should go and then <laughs> he would have an idea. If it's, if it's under the 30, three quotes, and then we'd have to find a way to fund it and then, right. because it's gonna be Christmas before we know it. Right. And I don't think you wanna be doing this in January. You wanna get this done quickly. You'd rather get it done. Yeah. And yeah. I'm happy to meet Bill down at the, at the Yacht Club. Just sure. If I through. could just get your contact info, if okay. we didn't leave it with the chief procurement officer. Okay. Yeah. And just because these would be considered capital repairs, right. it would have to be under twenty-five thousand okay. dollars, or it would have to go to 
capital improvement committee. Okay. Just, just well, to I would expect that the initial investigation and perhaps emergency repairs uh, certainly ought to be under that. Long term, that's not the story. Right. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, so if we can help, and if you can help us to get sure. this part of it done, and yeah, then hopefully to. we can do this within the confines of 30B and the ceilings that we're at, and then long term go back to the yeah, road that you were talking about else. earlier. Yeah. 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 And one thing, and I mentioned this to Steve, I was over there, I was looking around there on Friday, and there's a lot of wood in the back, like firewood. I hope they're not using it in the building. I believe they do. Yeah. They, they, they have a wood idea. stove. Yeah, they have wood the stove. Building. They do use it. Yeah. It's that's a little concerning. Yeah, Just I know. because yeah, the, there's yeah. no sprinklers, the, who knows the condition? It's your building, well, I can only say that for all my life, and I think I was five the first time I went in there. They've had that wood stove as long as I can remember. Yeah. I know we've had community meetings there in the winter, and that stove's been okay. Yeah. Um, but we can look at that as well. Yeah, we, it's something we can to look consider, at that as well. Because it is a public building. I don't know. It, that may not be allowed insurance-wise, but that would be. I know I was on the Library Building Committee, and that, that we chimneys, were allowed right. to use those, but it was gas. It wasn't wood. All right, we'll look at that, too. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anything else? That's I it. have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Just on the, the, the process of getting it listed on the National Historic Register, I think when we talked in June, Steve, is that something that the Historical Commission could begin the process for no. or start looking into it for the us? The selectmen have to begin the process. Um, Why do we? I, okay, then I, I, I thought we took a vote that we wanted to move in that direction. But yes. Are we <coughs> going I, to see if Edie or someone? Yeah, I, I uh, believe. Maybe it was the planning staff. I thought there was someone who was going to be able to help us get that started or tell us what the next steps are. I'd be. have to go back and look at, at uh, Edie's email, which I believe I forwarded, but I, I may not have. The first step would be for the owner of the property to All write right. a letter to the Mass Historical Commission. Is it eligible? Well, she's sure it is, mm -hmm. but the Mass Historical Commission has to say, yes, it is, before. Before the National Historic Commission. Before right, you right, can right, really yeah. start yeah. the paperwork. And yes, at that point, I think we would look for somebody to write it. I but I'll, I'll go find that email. And, Thank you. And send it again. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Okay, can you get for that definitely to Michael? And then yep. maybe we can start that conversation. I think Katie's going maybe with Lauren a bit and just start. You said the planning staff, just to kind of stop. I um, couldn't remember whether it was Eve or the planning right, staff okay. was in June, but yeah. So yeah. My, my next steps would be to call the procurement officer tomorrow? Or call me at 4845. Okay. All right. Um, Great. Thank you very much. Wait, and well, just one other thing. Hold on, in, ter in terms of that, the process, um, it sounds like we should be able to get this information pretty quickly. Yeah. Is this something we could put on the next agenda? Because we'll be at town meeting and the Warren Committee will be there if there's any chance we want to go seek anything from the reserve fund and I don't know if that's a viable option here or not depending on the amount we may be able to meet with them on the same night I think well that's definitely an optimistic <laughs> I love it if we could and if that's the case then I hope I say we should definitely do that I, I just have a feeling though that it's going to take a little bit more than okay. a couple of days to yeah to figure this out price wise mm -hmm. especially the age and the materials <laughs> of that building is constructed of now. Does it have a slate roof? Yes. It has yeah. a slate roof, correct? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, there's um, some <coughs> slate left. It's not all there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, just so I understand, uh, how do we determine whether it's eligible under 30B? Price. How much you're going to spend. But you said oh, no, no. that there's no price with engineering or there's no dollar amount? No, so the... the Architecture. The, the you you would it would go out for, I'm not actually I'm not sure. Okay. Um, they, we have a report from the engineer saying what needs to be addressed. For instance, there's a bulge in the front of the building. Right. He really needs to get inside to take some of the plaster out and really see what is causing that bulge. So what they're going to do is put together a study of their findings. Okay. Does that make sense? But absolutely, absolutely. I, and um, I I just wanted to to get the this, this step straight so that we could move as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So. So the what I was referring to, and I thought that's where you were going. There is a provision in a 30B where you if, if you have an exigency. Yeah. And you have to timeliness, you can go sole source, but 
there would be like if it was a, a flood or you know, I yeah. don't think we're there quite there yet. No, but. right. I mean that my question is the building's been deteriorating for a while and what does that you know, how does that play into what we're looking at? So mm -hmm. Okay. The bricks just popped out. Recently. Oh. So okay. Michael yeah, and Phil Richie can talk tomorrow. <laughs> you get in touch with sure. Michael. Yep, tomorrow. I mean if this is fast and if this is something that for next week to, to Katie's point, I think we move that way. If not, we still have to keep this on a fast track to okay. do this sooner versus later. Great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you all very Thank much. you. Thank you. Thank for you. The thank update. you. And I'm gonna jump because item six, seven, eight are gonna take a while. I'm gonna jump to item nineteen, which is Board and committee appointment. We need to fill a vacancy. On the board of trustees. I'm going to ask the chairman of the board of trustees, Steve Penny. You can bring your whole board. What? However you want to do it. You can bring them all up. And Jed, that's fine. So I'll ask um, Mr. Pender and Mr. Dorn to come. Just welcome. Thank you for coming Thank you. in. Good evening. The floor is yours. Good evening, thank you for having uh, us here. Uh, my name is Stephen Pender, I live at 40 Edward Ave. I am chairman of the Board of Trustees of Milton Cemetery. Um, Jed Dolan, 141 Cabot Street, Milton. Um, I am here with fellow trustees, Joe Reardon, Steve Fruzetti, and Jim Coyne. Uh, we are here to request that Jed Dolan be appointed uh, trustee of the Milton Cemetery. Uh, there is an opening on the board due to the death of Paul Dolan uh, in June of this year. Um, Thereafter, the board received a letter from Jed Dolan requesting that he be considered uh, for the open position. Uh, we received no other expressions of interest in the position. Uh, in September, the trustees met with Jed uh, in a, at a trustees meeting to talk about his interest in the position as well as his experience and background. And the trustees came, came out of that meeting, uh, unanimously agreed that uh, he would uh, be a valuable addition to the board. Um, and that's what brings us here today. Uh, if appointed, Jed would serve only until the next election. So you're basically talking about a six month um, um, uh, appointment. Uh, just a little bit about Jed. Jed is 49 years old, lives at 141 Cabot Street with his wife and two children. He is a lifelong resident of the town of Milton. He is a graduate of Thayer Academy in Providence College. Jed has been in the funeral business for 26 years and he has been running Dolan Funeral Home for the last six years. He is also past president of the Massachusetts Funeral Directors Association. We believe that Jed has the background and experience necessary to serve capably on the board of trustees and we respectfully request his appointment to the board. We are happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions? So this term would be until um, April of 2019? That is, that is correct. Okay. And then Jed can decide whether to run for re-election or what. We can get you signs and everyone can get you signed holders. <laughs> we collectively up here, we get you all kinds of stuff. We'll um, see. I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd be wanting to entertain a motion to appoint uh, Jed Dolan as interim trustee to the trustees of the cemetery to serve until the election of 20, April of 2019. So I'll move to, uh, to appoint Frederick J. Jed Dolan as an interim trustee to the trustees of the cemetery to serve until the next election. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Congratulations. You Thank, Thank you, Steve, too. Thank, Thank you both. Thank you, Thank you all for coming in. Okay, I'm going to go to... Oh, dear, I'm going to do... I'm going to do item 18 as well, since I have Joe Redden here as well. I'm going to do a reappointment to the Norfolk County Advisory Board. If Mr. Redden would come forward. I thought you were here to support your fellow cemetery trustees, and my colleague just, because the whole rest of the night is going to be taken up with MPEG. Thank you. Well. Well, we are on MPEG right now. No. Uh, thank you to the chair and to the members for the opportunity to serve as your representative to the Norfolk County Advisory Board. I would, as I did in my email from your office, uh, respectfully ask your consideration for reappointment to the Norfolk County Advisory Board. So I just have one point about a question. 
What's the date? Go this is one year. What is the date? It's going to be today. From this date today until one year from now. Is that what we're going to do? Did, uh, do you know when you expired, Joe? Or when it's you usually in August. Right. So I it, believe I it's mean, August this, of 2019. The next meeting is not till October 24. So I, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. August so, 31. Okay. I'd be willing to entertain a motion to uh, reappoint uh, Joseph M. Reardon to the Norfolk County Advisory Board for a term of one year. I move to appoint Joseph Reardon to the Norfolk County Advisory Board for a term of one year. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you to you all. Thank Please you. feel. I, I would like to take a moment of privilege to recognize uh, Tony Farrington for actually coming to one of our meetings and sitting through the longest meeting we probably have ever had. I had a ball. Well, was I, a blast. I, it, a blast. I don't know that I would really call was. it a blast, but I want to thank you for coming. Uh, I know that other members have reached out to Peter Collins, our commissioner, and Michael Dennehy, our uh, town administrator, has taken tours, has, knows all about our services at the county. Excellent. And it's a privilege for me to serve and represent regional government for, for the town of Milton. So if I can be a resource to you and what you're doing, I'm happy to do it. We're lucky to have it. Thank, right. thank you yeah. very much. Thanks, Thank Joe. You, Joe. Have a good night. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to go to item six, which is discussion approval on the issuance of a friendly preliminary denial <coughs> of Comcast of Milton LLC cable license. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you might want to. We might want to go to five because that right. leads into six. Excuse me. Yeah. So let's go to five. Let's have our discussion first of the Comcast Milton LLC okay. licensing update. I can hear you shuffling papers, Mr. Zulis, so <laughs> I am. the floor is yours. So, um, so I can give you an update uh, on where we are. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Denny, Dennehy and I and uh, Christine Stanton and our consultant Bill Sol Solomon have been uh, working with Comcast, negotiating with Comcast for a while. Uh, we think we are not um, at an agreement yet that we can propose to the board, but we think we're headed in the right direction and we have the framework um, uh, for a possible agreement, and I thought it would be useful to lay out where we are right now, given their current proposal, because I think it's, I think it's a, a, as I said, I think we're heading in the right direction, and I think, um, uh, you know, very soon we'll, we'll hopefully get to the point where we have an agreement. Um, the the <clears throat> primary points of what Comcast has proposed in their last proposals are as, are as follows we would have um, an increase in the town of the amount payable from gross annual, annual revenue, gross annual Comcast revenues from 4.35% to 5%. Um, that will result in an additional approximately $700,000 to Milton over the course of the contract based on $10.7 million, uh, $10 million of revenue per year to Comcast. Um, two, um, Comcast has proposed a payments in the amount of $400,000 um, uh, for capital infrastructure improvements. That would be payable in equal installments over three years uh, before there were none. So that, that is an improvement. Three, uh, they have proposed that we would have an HD channel uh, within 36 months and we would be the first town in Massachusetts to have that. Uh, I think the city of Revere has it, but we'd be the first town that has that. Four, um, uh, now, uh, earlier in the negotiations, Comcast had, um, had suggested that they were going to um, uh, 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 remove the, uh, the maintenance for the INET in town, um, and basically we we're going to have to be on our own in terms of INET. They have come back now and proposed what they call a dark fiber agreement. It's the first one in New England. It would allow uh, Milton the continued use of the, the, what they call the BFN, the Broadband Fiber Network, or INET, um, under a five-year agreement uh, for a nominal charge of $1,000 a month uh, with a potential for uh, an option for, um, for um, uh, additional time. Uh, and with each side having a 60-year uh, term, a 60-day, sorry, 60-day uh, termination provision. So um, I think this is a good proposal. I think we're headed in the right direction. The devil is in the details. We haven't got the contracts yet. We expect them soon. Uh, the benefits of this proposal, I, I, as I see them, are as follows. One, it would be an additional $1.1 million for Milton. 
Two, we'd have the HD channel commitment, which, which, as I said, we're the first town in Massachusetts to have that. Three, we'd have the continued use of the INET uh, for a minimal cost, which is important for the continued use of the government and, and for the schools. And, and four, uh, we'd have the flexibility uh, of, of, at some point, if we wanted to, discontinuing that maintenance if, down the line, the town decided it wanted to do a, a municipal fiber network. And so we would have that flexibility. So in terms of money, the HD channel, the continued use of, of INET, and the flexibility um, um, for doing something different in the future, uh, I think those would be benefits to that. So that's, uh, that's, what I, that's the current proposal from Comcast. As I said, I think we're in, in the right direction, but we haven't received the documents yet. Correct. And if I just might add that the latest discussion today, and, th and there have been several over the last week, um, four or five to, to, to be uh, precise, um, very active dialogues, um, Comcast uh, understanding what this board talked about and the use of INET in this town and its importance. And they circled the wagons and came up with this um, unique proposal uh, that would be the first in New England. Um, and we were working through the details on that. And as uh, Selectman Zula said, the devil is in the details and the details we should receive on Friday. But very healthy negotiation. Um, Mike Lynch, uh, Michael Lynch, who was uh, part of the conversation as well, um, to have uh, high definition um, come to Milton. I think um, we heard loud and clear at the ascertaining hearing that that was um, um, preeminent with a lot of the folks that, that watch it and, and work through the programming with that. So. Um, I, I must praise Selectman Zulis. He's, he's been leading the charge with Attorney Solomon on this and very healthy discussion the last couple of weeks to get us to this point. Um, and I, th I think it's uh, a very uh, healthy, healthy um, negotiation and uh, hopefully contract uh, in the near future. Questions? I have one, but I'll go last. Nothing? Mm -hmm. So what does this do to our efforts on the RFP of doing our own, we continue to let that play so, out for right yeah. now? Okay. So, so what we could do um, the, the, in, on the flexibility side, we could continue with the INET and have the servicing of the INET for this five-year okay. uh, period, but we, we would have the option to terminate it on 60 days right, at any that. time. So if we wanted to do our own at some point. So it was beneficial, we could be on this in 60 days. Exactly. Correct. Okay. okay. Mike, could I ask? Um, is it possible for you to summarize some of the points that you just articulated so that I can better digest what it is? I'm sure. happy to vote on it this evening. No, no, I'm not asking you to vote. We're not voting on no, it. Yeah, not asking you to vote. Okay. Um, the, the vote would be uh, to allow the negotiations to, to continue. continue. That's all that, it is. That's what that is. Okay. There's no vote on these terms at all. Right on. Okay. Um, and fact, but even when you get the contract, rather than having to, you know, if you're able to kind of synthesize oh, absolutely. Yeah. synopsis. Absolutely. Uh, this helpful is helpful to me. Yeah, absolutely. This is real time, Tony. This was today, basically. Okay, okay. <laughs> so so yeah. absolutely. We'll 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 tee it all up, but I thought it'd be useful just to get the points out there. And but we'll tee it all up for decision, you know, if not at the next uh, if not um, in two weeks, you know, uh, hopefully soon thereafter. Okay. But we'll tee it all up for you. All right. And I think the relevance in it is you'll see what the town received in the last contract which expires on Monday, and what the town will get uh, in the next 10-year contract. And, and it's, it's, it's a sizable difference. Want to move up? Good? You good? We'll move yep. to six? Yeah. So if everyone's good there, I'm going to move to item six, which is a discussion approval, of, which is, I'm going to yield it to you as well, on the vote on the issuance of a, of a friendly pre preliminary denial of a Comcast and Milton LLC cable license. And they, Yes. So, so the license expires on the fifteenth, which is Saturday? Monday. 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 Sorry. Yeah, Monday. So the license expires. So procedurally, what this allows us to do, uh, this friendly denial, is to continue the negotiations and to to finalize the negotiations. We think we're we're getting close on the broad points, and then uh, they're going to start sending us documents. I think Friday. So this friendly denial procedurally allows us to continue those negotiations. Um, with the with the possibility of having an agreement, which we at this point we think we're going to have, so this is a procedural motion allows us to continue the negotiations. Doesn't um, doesn't um, um, compromise the rights of either party going forward. Friendly is the key word. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it's clear in uh, Attorney Solomon's um, correspondence here. Go ahead, question. Good. Can I have a motion? So I, I would. I'd entertain a motion to vote on the issuance of a friendly, 
Confirm any denial of the Comcast to Milton LLC cable license to allow this to continue. Someone wants the to the motion, make? this lengthy motion that we received, or is it the shorter version? I, I, the, the shorter version, I believe, Katie. Um, let, me, let me just take a look at um, the packet. Um, do you want this, Kate? Kate? Do you have this one here? Oh, I have it. Okay. I just wasn't sure which one Attorney Solomon was recommending. Whether it's page one or page two or both? Yes, essentially, yes. I mean, it looks to me like page one is the actual, covers the basis that we need to. The, the short one will suffice. That's what it looks yeah. like. It looks to me like the short one, but yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, in number two, he's saying attached here too is the proposed motion and vote, but that, that's the reason I asked it. Yeah. Um, you think he just did this? He thought this was not knowing that we would propose our, have our own motion written? Oh, I don't know. I, what do you think, I, Mike? I think Mike probably No, I, I spoke to him, and, and it's verbatim what he gave me, the short version. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I think, it, I think it, it condenses what, what's in the larger one. Yeah, I think that's exactly okay. right. I think okay. That's exactly right. If we, if we vote on the shorter one, we can sign the longer one. Okay. Okay. Good. So, Go ahead. So I'll move to, uh, to um, vote, uh, vote on the issuance of a friendly preliminary de denial of Comcast, of Comcast of Milton LLC cable license to allow for competition of cable license agreement and to preserve the rights of each party. Second. Any discussion? We all good? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts on that. Item seven, a discussion approval of Milton Access Television exec with Executive Director regarding FCC changes. And we have a motion before us here now. Um, Carl Michael, you're going to come and join us at the table? Mike Lynch, the Executive Director of MATV. Yeah. You, you want to do that? You want to do eight first? All right, so wanna, we'll jump to eight and then come back to seven, which is discuss and approve the MPEG Milton Public Education and Government Access contract update. And this is a... Um, Proposed motion to vote on the <coughs> approval of our new MPEG contract, <coughs> which we received, I believe, just today, correctly. Am I correct? Just. There's a lot of institutional knowledge on this committee. Mr. Lynch. And Mr. Lynch. Gene, how are you? Welcome. Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Mike and Katie and, and Tony. Hi, hey, Bernie. Yeah, good to see you. And never had the pleasure. How are you, Bernie? Good, thanks. So, My pleasure. You want to speak for it? You want us to go ahead? Uh, sure. Well, uh, members of the board, thank you for having me. Um, <clears throat> Again, I'm Mike Lynch, the Executive Director of Milton Access TV. I'm joined by our President, Bernie Lynch, our Treasurer, uh, Dr. Giuliano, and our Secretary, Ms. Ella Wells. I'm um, here before you tonight because our contract with the Town of Milton uh, expires October 20th of this year. So we are here to get a renewal of our contract and have a discussion. Um, I think the proposed agreement, which is the agreement we had in place on our previous contract is in front of you. It is. Um, <clears throat> and the only uh, part of the contract, there are a few changes that are being proposed to be made. Um, one of which was, uh, I'll draw your attention to section nine, uh, section nine, paragraph two, um, which had dealt with, it says MPEG shall also receive through the issuing authority any peg access equipment and a mobile production ban to the issuing authority by the cable operators in Milton. That was in our contract in 2008 uh, when we were taking over from Comcast. Right. So that is no longer <coughs> valid and can be struck from the contract. Um, we are proposing, I, I jumped to that one quickly. I apologize, I'll go back to the beginning. So um, section two, the term, we're proposing the same 10 year term that we had before. Um, and then the only other section that it would be changing or proposing the changes is the annual funding for PEG. Um, so as Selectman Zillis reported, Comcast is uh, graciously going from 4.35% of their gross annual revenues to 5%. So our contract um, 
currently states for, so the percentage would change. So I think, given that we got this just recently, I think what we're going to do is, if my colleagues are okay with this, is to take this on advisement tonight. And would it be all right if I schedule it for one of the meetings during town meeting week to vote then? To put on for vote? Would that be all right with you? It'll actually expire before town meeting. Yeah, that's all right. We'll, we'll, it's not like we're going to turn you off. <laughs> so if we could do it, maybe the... Um, I just, I know some some of us need some time. Would be on if I schedule for the first night on, what's it, the 24th? 22nd. 22nd. Would, it, would that be amenable to everyone? Is that enough time? Sure. Do, do we need to do anything in the interim to... Just make those changes. So the substantive, the, the changes that if this board approves it was uh, vetted through town council today, he had no issues with that because we were late in getting this document to you today. He didn't want to send a second document to you with the proposed changes mm -hmm. that uh, Michael Lynch just talked about, but he's vetted through those. If those board agrees with, agrees with that, he can have that document available tomorrow and, and you can vote on it accordingly. Okay, I just meant, was there anything we needed to put in place in the interim? And, and it would feel more comfortable if we had a one day that, extension, that's what I, it seems um, like. which had happened to us at the last uh, contract renewal. I'm okay that we were with trying that. to avoid, but you know, would have to. We are the contract is through October 20th, so we would need a two extension. Day, a two day, that. until the so long extend until the 22nd. Right. Would that be all right with you, Katie? Mm -hmm. sure. So I'd entertain a motion to to extend Comcast, uh, excuse me, Bill Nexus. <laughs> we going by Mill Nexus TV or MPEG? Which which MPEG, are we? Uh, so, right. so I'd entertain a motion to extend MPEG's contract from October 20th, 2018 to October 22nd, 2018. We will then take a formal vote of, of a, on a new 10 year contract. How's that? I'll make that as a motion since I so said moved. it. Sec can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then we'll, it'll be on for the 22nd. Is that all right with you? All good? And, and Mike, go ahead. Any other questions? Whatever. <coughs> since, since we have you all here, go ahead. Well, no, I'm willing to oh, go ahead. no, I, I just, I, this is a very small thing. I did catch a couple typos, so do okay. we just send them to send them our way? Yep. Okay. Um, go, go ahead. I left my questions home, but I, oh. if I, I'll, I'll look through and see. Sorry, uh, Mike, and I, I was just going to ask about the percentages. Um, okay. Do you is that uh, is the proposal on percentages? Is that something that you have a, um, a fixed amount that you're going to you're going to propose as the percentage, or is that um, because I just want because in the old contract, as you know, it was four percent, um, and we did get four point three five percent. So the question is, so are we going to go up proportionally if we go up to five percent, or? Um, looking to the board for their guidance on, on that. Okay, so maybe that's yeah. something we need to dig into. Yeah. Um, so, so in the prior contract, there was, a, there was, a, 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 there was an amount that was, was right. given to MPEG, and then there was a small amount that was kept uh, by the town, and so I think we just need to determine whether that's gonna continue or not. And I think I read today in some correspondence that, that at, at the time, and that may have been more than 10 years ago, that that small amount went towards the IT department, am I correct, or the IT? Yeah, yeah. The improvements to, to town infrastructure. Most recently, it, it helped fund the feasibility study for the Minnesota Broadband Committee. Okay. So there is that pot of money that, that yeah. the town can draw off as well from that percentage of the, of the full percent. So though, did, did yeah. I misunderstand, though, it seemed that um, there was, um, a question as to whether we could actually do that, carve off that that income. Am I correct? In in did I read your comments correctly? Well, just the, the you know I wasn't involved in the negotiation in 2008. So the 4.35 percent that Comcast grants for PEG funding, um, you know, and PEG was granted the four. So I kind of believe that the 0.35 percent is put into um, an account or a pool where MPEG can then come and formally request funds from the selectmen, okay. um, sort of like a checks and balances kind of thing, because it. Um, it really is designated for PEG use only. So, um, so you know, it, well, I know yeah. and yeah. we've done that before, twice before, um, when we built out 
this room and the blue room yeah. for technology right. improvements. Right. We came to the selectmen and asked for those funds to be released from that account. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Mike, can it even be used for things like, I know this is a small point, but like the, the, the tablecloths here and the, the setting up of the room or the, you know, the tables, chairs, whatever we might need to, because we're still trying to figure out how we, where this board's permanent meeting room will be, but I think mm -hmm. it can be used for some of that as well since it relates to your filming of the meetings. Is that correct? Um, I, I agree it, with yes. you on that. Yeah. Don't you have a janitor? <laughs> no, and I, I, I what, what made me, just well, a follow up to Katie. But I think it's related to like the build out of the blue room in the end. A follow up to, yeah. to your point. Like I noticed at my, at my first MPEG meeting representing this board, like you saw like a, a table that's going to, that you, a multi purpose table that they're putting in the studio. And I thought of this from like, if there's a way we could maybe set this up, because I think you're going to be filming more things in this room versus less in the, in the long term, and I think maybe that's something, not only your expertise, but this funding might be able to help us to do. So this might be Studio A. You got it. <laughs> right. That's correct. Uh, so no, I it thought you was. I thought Pierce is Studio A. This is probably like Studio D. You have so many studios now. Um, I will say that Barbara Martin, uh, who worked in our office, uh, right. dutiful, dutifully explored and found that it could be used. We, we bought a new speaker system, which was most recently used at the rededication down at the cemetery of Marion's right. memorial. So stuff like that, uh, that pool of money can be drawn on. Um, okay. And then one other Go thing. Go ahead. We, we, um, in this uh, contract with Comcast, there'll be a significant capital amount. So we need to probably determine whether that this contract should address that or not. Um, because the money's coming here and then it has to get there. <laughs> right. so, so we need to have a mechanism for that. So, um, right, because so we also, we this is the first time that Comcast yeah. is offering us capital. Right. Which we're very excited about, so that will need to be. Right. So should probably follow our regular capital process? Do you, no, or you think no? No, <laughs> because, it, because it's, it's, it's targeted funding okay. for, okay. for um, yeah. public access, so I think it's probably, probably so needs it's to be addressed, 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 okay. yeah, okay. addressed in this contract. You could probably take the language right out of it. In the Comcast contract with the town, it says in there what the capital expenditures are for. Okay. okay. I have a question. This might be for the town administrator. Is, is the draft that we got today, is this based on the 2008 contract? Is that what yes. you said? Okay. Yep. And this has been the John form. This is what you and I, John, right, okay. talked about a couple okay. weeks ago with, with Michael. Yeah. Okay. I started looking at it today, but, but it only came over this morning and didn't really have a chance to go through the whole thing. So I'm glad we have another couple of weeks to yeah. Yeah. Thank you. check for typos or anything else like, like Melinda found. <laughs> I just want to say I've been there so many times now in the past 20 years going to back when it was just a van that was kept at the high school that you've brought it leaps and bounds to where it is today and I know that takes a lot of hard work from you, your staff, all the meetings, all the things. You cover a lot more than just a weekly selectments <laughs> meeting now. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's a credit to all that you do here and it's definitely truly an asset for the town and, and I speak on behalf of all of us that we do appreciate all of your hard work and the board and everything that you do. Our sta uh, Michael graduated from Quinnipiac University in a degree in communications. Um, we have others on the board that gradu graduated from Hofstra uh, with a degree in communication. Um, his brother graduated from Hofstra, although he, we have too many lynches in this, so <laughs> he'll never probably come to Milton, but. When I stay, see you walk through the door, I still see your father. Oh, yeah. I still see your father, his grandfather, so I, his great grandfather. I still see him, so. That's right. Okay. We good? All good? All right, so um, I don't think you'll even have to come, but we'll do it at one of the meetings. We'll do it at the meeting on the 22nd before town meeting. And uh, unless Michael needs you there, I think we'll be all right. We'll just, it'll be a phone I can be, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'll be there for town meeting anyways, okay. so. All right. And you'll okay. probably see the document back at you with that capital component language and any other. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. The, the reporting requirements, I, I don't know whether, Mike, do you find them a little bit onerous? There's like monthly sending and monthly minutes, and I'm sure they're coming to the office. We don't usually read them every month. Generally, in the past, Mike has come in and given an annual report. Right. I mean, maybe that's something that each of us we'll could do think about. Do we really need to get monthly no. minutes from the MPEG board at this point? 
you usually include them like in your annual report anyway. Correct. Yeah. So and we had talked about that um, at the last uh, renewal. Is that you know the board we we strive to meet every month. We don't, um, but we do send our minutes you know in. But um, I don't you know. I don't think we need to do it. Well, and we have a member of this board on the MA right. board. Is it you, Richard? Are you serving yeah. on it? Yeah. So, to the extent that there's something significant, it can always be reported back through our own appointee. On well, the this board. is the one significant in the hair. It's the renewal. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the one, it's the most significant thing since I've been there in the hair. So, so um, we might want to ask John to revisit that sure. or relax we'll that, that a little bit. Yeah. I'm fine. You okay with that? Yeah. I'm also, you know, I feel like we have any shortest yeah. of things to read on this board. We're happy to come in and provide, you know, I know that. The other town, we're not a town department, but the town department's right. going to do a quarterly report. Um, we're happy to do that as well if that is better and to keep everyone well informed. Um, yeah. Fly a flag. I'm okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. We, I mean, you can work that out with Michael. Mm -hmm. I, I think we'd all be happy with that. You okay with that? Yeah, if, uh, it probably makes sense, Mike, for you to make a recommendation on what you think makes sense on the reporting sure. uh, from your perspective and from your board's perspective. And, um, you know, it sounds like uh, whatever makes sense will make sense for us. Okay. Anybody else? Anything? You're good? Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mr. Farrington, anything? I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. We good? Just thank you very much for all that they do. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you, Bernie. Okay. Better than last time. All right, I'm going to go to item. Uh, I'm going to jump here. I'm going to go to item 10. Oh, you want to do seven? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to do seven. That's just still here. And then I'll go to, I'm going to go back to seven. And then I'll go to 10. I'm going to get. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, so item seven is a <coughs> proposed uh, discussion approval of the MATV with you regarding FCC changes, and you can speak to, speak okay. to that, Michael, if you would. Okay. Um, so this, I'll be very brief, um, but I wanted to come to the board to report on um, some actions at the FCC level that are might affect or will definitely affect uh, cable um, in the, not only in Massachusetts, but in the entire country. Um, so I'll just give you a brief background so that you understand. But um, and this might actually answer some questions about the Comcast contract and how the funding works. But um, basically, the there is an act written, the Cable Act of 1984, uh, was written to regulate the cable industry. Um, there's a lot of parts in there, but I'm just here to talk about two parts, and that's the two parts that the FCC is talking about. Um, so not to get too far into the uh, to the act, but um, in the act, there's a part two, section 11, that stipulates that cable providers have to provide municipalities with uh, channel capacity for public education and government uh, programming, which is where PEG comes from, and that's what we are. Um, the next section, part three, section 621, deals with the franchise requirements. So along with that, the cable providers are required to give up to 5% of their gross annual revenues to fund PEG services. Um, and that's how we're funded. And up until now, that's how we've, we, we've always been funded. Um, there's a ruling, there's a proposed rule, so it's not a rule yet, uh, by the FCC to rule that all in-kind cable franchise-related obligations, other than PEG capital costs, are a franchise fee under the Cable Act and thus count against the franchise fee cap. So there's a lot of words in there. Um, what does this mean? So the FCC is proposing that cable companies will be able to deduct what we get for services that are in kind from our franchise fee. Well, what could those services be? Well, they could be anything. They could be the transmission of our signals. Um, they could be the access to the guide. Um, they could be the service calls that we get when our stations go down. Um, we believe that the, the FCC is ruling in kind as being so vague so that the cable providers will be able to determine what those costs are. Um, the value of those would be at fair market value and they would be determined by the cable companies. So we believe that this actually might wipe out franchise fee entirely. Um, we are sort of under the gun on a timeline here. So the time frame of the further notice of proposed rulemaking hasn't been logged in the Federal Register yet, but once it does, uh, we have 30 days to submit an opposition to their ruling. Uh, after that, there's 60 days of public comment period, and then the, uh, it's anticipated the FCC will make a final ruling in early of 2019. Um, so I'm here just to update you on that. Um, so basically, uh, 
the cable companies could charge back so much of the franchise fee that it could be eliminated, so we wouldn't have any operating money to run the stations. Um, I should let you know, so I'm, I'm actually a board member of Mass Access. It's the nonprofit advocacy group that represents over 150 community media stations in the state or PEG stations. Uh, we've hired a uh, legal counsel to respond to the period, uh, to the comment period. Uh, we've also reached out to the MMA, the Mass Municipal Association, and they are uh, in opposition against it. Um, so what I'm hoping the board would be willing to do is to submit a letter um, to the FCC in opposition, and I can certainly provide um, some points that uh, need to be made, but this uh, really could be detrimental to PEG stations. Um, the, we have been looking in the general consensus among mass access, I belong to the Alliance for Community Media, all of our national organizations, that the way that the FCC is comprised that this rule will pass. So we are going to have a long fight in the appeals court to hopefully either overturn the ruling or get some, a, you know, a hard definition of what in-kind is, mainly not the transmission of the signals. So, you know, we broadcast everything in Milton ourselves through the iNet or through the internet back to our station, but it leaves our station and goes to Weymouth and then comes back to the customers. And that's the concern that we have is that that cost could be really labeled anything. Um, we are... I'm extremely happy that Comcast is offering us an HD channel and that we're the first town in the state to get one. I know that Revere does have one. Uh, Verizon has started offering HD channels too, but we do have some concern that HD channels would obviously be a lot more money to run than SD. So, um, so I didn't, as, if anyone has any questions, I can certainly. So my thought is though, just having done some, this just sounds very familiar to me to a project I worked on several years ago where the cellular carriers were lobbying hard to the FCC for expanded width, that's radio been, width. That's my next one. That which I'll would take about. away from the public safety radio communications usage. Yep. And so if the FCC is considering this, the providers like Comcast and Verizon have to be lobbying them to do this. They have to be. Right. I believe the chairman of the FCC was a former lobbyist for Verizon. There you go. Okay, I'll let you go to your next bit. <laughs> it's um, eerily similar as you start telling the story. Yeah. I'm like, I've lived this before. <laughs> Just. Um, so the next uh, item I'll talk to you about, I'm not, I will admit, I'm not an expert. Or I'm not well versed on this one. Um, but it's called the wireless order or the small cell wireless order. Um, so the FCC has already issued its declaratory ruling and third report on an order for on wireless infrastructure. It was adopted on September 26th. Um, this limits what local governments can charge telecom companies for using utility poles and rights away for small cell towers. So they're trying to expand the cell network. Um, I've been told that the small cell towers look like little white boxes on the utility poles, so you don't even know what they are. Um, Boston's already seen a boatload of them go up on their poles. Um, so, not uh, so this could result in just huge losses of revenue to the town um, and it could start the domino effect to put pressure on state and congress to reduce or eliminate cable franchise fees entirely so if this wireless order goes through and um and they win or, and they start to enforce this rule cable providers could turn around and say well if the small cell providers don't have to pay a franchise fee when they enter the town why do we have to pay one um so again, uh, we're working, and I say we, the organization I belong to, as well as, um, as MPEG is working on it. The Mass Munici Municipal Association has already filed their strong opposition to it. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware, and you know, if you might want to file a letter as well in the opposition. I think that's a smart thing to do because those boxes are popping up everywhere. And, I, and, and uh, from what I understand, the FCC has already capped like what the cities can charge for the installation. Right. And then it's just a small nominal annual fee going forward, not based off of a revenue percentage. Can I ask a question? Sure. Just, because I never knew this until I think the winter that we got the 116 inches. So a person has a television here in the town of Milton. And they go to a radio, well, they don't know if they, if, 
a Radio Shack type store. There are no more Radio Shacks. I think they went out of business. Mm -hmm. And you just buy a, one of these small little antennas and you plug it into the back of that TV. You can get, I think, 20 high definition channels for free. Is it 20? It's, it, it's, it's more than 10. Yeah, I'm, that I'm not too sure on. How does that happen? And I, I don't think, uh, I thought the bunny ears went away. So No, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I did it last year. It's not even bunnies, it's a, it's a, it's a unique type of antenna. They're very common. You get them on Amazon mm -hmm. and you plug that into the back of your TV. It's actually one of your, um, the host of one of your shows <laughs> showed me how to do it. And there's at least 10, if not, I know it's very popular on people on boats. Mm -hmm. They use it a lot. But in this Boston alone, there's at least 10 high def channels you can get. And including for like the, the main news providers. There are uh, companies going around trying to bypass, you know, Comcast and Verizon as the cable providers. So they are, you know, putting the infrastructure in to broadcast those channels. Wow. Okay. Which is something we're faced with too, because in this modern age, you know, people are cutting the cord and getting rid of cable and, um, you know, that's where we're primarily watched. So, so this is a critical fight. Right, because this is this is the big corporate cable and telecom companies trying to game the system through regulation, yeah. at, at, the, at the to compromise the efforts of the local uh, municipalities. So yeah. it's the, the corporate it's, America trying to game the system. In my view, corporate yeah. America trying to game the system through regulation against the small municipalities, and actually the large municipalities uh, as well. Yeah. The municipalities. Every, so yeah. this is a critical fight, and I and I think we should I think we should engage as much as we can on this because um, because this could change the landscape for lo small local sure. access mm -hmm. you know for a long time put you back where you were 20 years ago it, yeah, i mean it'll, it'll part our stations black i mean mm -hmm. and we are we are contemplating you know doing a blackout day for you know to to show what would happen but we also risk cable companies saying well look <laughs> local access channels are just black <laughs> you know um but yeah it could it really it's it's very concerning we I've always, you know, known that cable is dwindling, and we would have to find a way to survive without cable. But this just really cuts that time down significantly. Right. So. Like you say, going black, just just like that. Yeah. So no, you know, the biggest thing that I call it is, you know, no broadcast of government meetings, no broadcast of sports, no broadcast of town meeting, no broadcast of all of our public shows. I mean, it just all would go away. I agree so. with what you said. Okay, so we, you will stay in contact with Michael on, us, <coughs> on those yep. letters, and we'll just keep us on, on this one, these two aspects, I think, yeah. Yeah. I think we need to be more proactive versus reactive. It's, yeah, as soon as the, uh, the ruling hits the register and we start the comment period, I'll certainly let the board know. Okay. Um, you can even come back if you want. Sure. Okay. I mean, it's clear, I think one of the things we saw when we had you in, was it back in July, just about... I think it was just to discuss, it was supposed to be to discuss Comcast and residents poured out just because they were so concerned about MPEG and Milton. So you do have a following and I think that they need to be aware of that as well. So mm -hmm. I think I think we need to be, as I say, proactive in this versus reactive. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Um, uh, just a question. Go ahead. So if we were to develop our own net would that at all mitigate some of the negative effects of this or no just because of the, of the finances involved and I mean it's so the the you know we have our where we're Comcast is proposing this five-year side agreement for the dark fiber um, after that you know it, they would if the town built their own and we were able to join on the town zone that would help us but if we didn't and we had to still use the, right. the INET, because it's uh, Comcast isn't going to take it down off the, the poles or out of the buildings. It's just going to be there. So they would then charge us back for using that INET to connect to right. their system. Right. So, you know, building the, the municipal fiber system, if we were able to be on it, which I think that would be the plan, it would, you know, that would help right. us. Okay. But, but it's still getting that, you know, that helps us in Milton. The biggest concern is is going from where we originate at my studio at Pierce in Milton, 
It then goes to a regional hub in Weymouth, and then it comes back to the Milton customers. And there's no way to bypass that. So that is the Comcast. Okay. That was my question. If we had our own INET, would it still have to go to Weymouth? Oh, yeah. It still has to go to Weymouth. It would okay. still go to Weymouth. Yeah, because it, it still needs to go out through the cable system. I get you. I get so you. The, the, the way that MPEG uses the INET is that, so for instance, when we're broadcasting from this building here, we're using the INET to go back to Pierce, and from Pierce it leaves on right. the Comcast line. So all of, you know, just like the buildings are connected for telephone and internet, that's how we're connected too. So you know, if we built our, and actually now I'm thinking about if we had the municipal fiber system, it really doesn't have to do anything with Comcast. It reduce the fee of the connecting of the buildings, but it'd still be the the cable run. Got it. So, so. Um Katie Conlon and I were just at a breakfast, and the president of the the Selectmen's Association, his town, I believe, just put in their own fiber network. Um, is that something? It, it that's different than the INET. I'm really not a tech person, as you can see, but I'm I'm just is that is that correct, or is that something that's a town could do to? You'd still need a hub, though. Yeah, so you still, I mean, okay. we'd still need a way need to broadcast better. through the cable provider. You know, we, we have Comcast, so we still need to be able to broadcast through okay. Comcast to get back to the residents. Okay. So um, it would be, you know, if, if our head end was in Milton to then broadcast to the customers, it'd be easier, but it's still, it's, you know, and it's still I don't think it, it, you know, it does matter where the regional hub is. I don't right. think that there's a closer one that they could move us to because the infrastructure is already in place, so. Right, and well, what, what would that do? But, um, so it seems that not only do we need to um, get on this ourselves, but to, to also join with other municipalities. That's what you have me thinking now is that yeah. what we're doing here now is perhaps this is something we maybe should look to partner with one of our neighbors on mm -hmm. to take a regional approach to this versus right. just a local approach. If, yeah. Especially the way that I think we all can agree that at some point cable's not going to be the backbone of how people watch television and do what. I think it's right, no. wireless is going to be the, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, on the radio side, towers of it's it's going microwave point to point now mm -hmm. versus running tower to tower. So it's I think it's just a, a thought, especially for Joe's commit, you know, that the um, for the to start to think about, you know, may, who, who knows future. who ran off a can or Quincy right here yeah. on this too. Just uh, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank Anything you. Anything else? No, thank you. Good, we good? Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you all for coming in and um, we'll see you on the twenty second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to, now I'm going to jump to item 10, which is a discussion, proposal for an arts and cultural, culture director position, and I'm going to invite um, resident Frank Graham to present to us on this thank topic, you. and thank you for your patience tonight, Absolutely. And thank you for waiting, and thank you for coming in. I ended up writing more while I was waiting. <laughs> more to say? That's okay. Yeah, more to say. You got two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have humor in this room. Yes, you do. So um, thank you, everybody, for um, inviting me here and considering this. And I'd been in touch with Mike um, a while ago um, about it, so it's nice to follow up. I know most of you, but I'll introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I'm Frank Graham. I've lived in Milton about 13 years. I'm an illustrator, graphic designer, a musician, an event planner, a mom, an editor, and an exhausted volunteer in town um, at the MAC and at many other areas over the years. Um, I have a passion for the arts and organizing, and I've been informally doing that kind of work um, over the years because I love it and I see I see what it does and I've seen a direction that Milton's moving in that I'm excited by um, and I'd like to do that formally um, or have someone do it but I think it's important that we recognize the arts and culture in the town um, and I see this as a really good time to do it so you may have read my proposal which is I, wrote, I think I wrote in February so it's changed a little bit as I've talked to more people and Certain things have moved along um, that I had mentioned in that, um, so they're in a different place. But um, the gist is still the same. So 
there's a really rich arts and culture scene in Milton, but it's really not seen. Um, and I think that we need a department or a director to coordinate, connect, and lift up all the great things that are happening here. Um, a connecting thread that would so uh, between all this vital programming and our town's vision for the year. So not just kind of connecting it all, but really having some oversight. Um, so for the year and then subsequent years. Um, and I think with that planning, uh, the events could be celebrated as they should be. So a lot of times they're in a void and there is great things happening. So that's my elevator pitch, but I'm gonna go on a little bit and um, tell you what I think it should be and then um, why. And then, you know, I guess ask me anything. So I wrote about this a little bit in the proposal, but I think we're, we're, we would be leveraging the collective strength by coordinating and supporting the town's local programming from organizations <coughs> and services, and I'm gonna name them quickly just because it's kind of interesting to hear how much really is going on. I'll do it quickly because you know them all, but the library, the schools, the churches, the colleges, Mac, Micah, We Are Milton, Celebrate Milton, Forbes House, Eustace Estate, Women's Club, Courageous Conversations, Council on Aging, um, Sustainable Milton, Visiting Artists, Milton Access, Milton for Peace, Road Races, Parks and Rec, Blue Hills Reservation and Trailside Museum, Chamber of Commerce, Curry's Theater, Borchfest, um, Suffolk Resolves, The Milton Scene, The Milton Times, uh, The Who's It Club, The DCR, Holiday Events, um, The Milton Hospital Events, The Neponset Greenway Planning Board and The River, um, The Historical Commission, The Conservation Commission, and lastly, and there's probably more, but uh, the Teen Center, which will definitely need coordination between it and the town and events um, as that gets going. You forgot so one. I think. You forgot one. What's that? You forgot one. Oh, I, I knew it. I knew you we were going to. I don't think I heard it say Forbes House. I said Forbes House. Oh, you did? Okay. And I'm and wrong. I, and I am going to mention, um, I'll hand these out. I've I'm got, already um, I've got uh, just some. Um, letters of support from local okay. people. And the Forbes House would be one, but I didn't have a whole lot of time, so I got a few. Um, so yeah, they're doing great stuff, and the Eustace is, and there's so many, so many great things. Um, so if we articulate this vision with compre comprehensive programming um, and really collaborate, I don't need, you know, we're not looking for somebody to start, you know, calling the shots, but really collaborate with these groups, we can integrate it into the master plan. And that's what I think is where it really goes to the next level and we really can have the vision uh, fully realized. Um, so town-wide programming could engage residents of all ages and background, really important piece, and bridge existing gaps in neighborhoods that are not as uh, served generally. Um, and with this kind of direction, we can do themes. I mean, there's so much that can happen, and I won't go too into it now, but you know, we could do local history month, black history month, interfaith music <coughs> events or series. There's so much that we could do if we look at the whole year and two years um, and really talk to people that are doing this work. Um, so we could even consider something like Quincy's 50 Days of Freedom, I think it is, where it's 50 days of just free stuff and it gets people out and you, you, it's all free and you find out what's going on in your town and then you go out to dinner, and so money coming back in. Um, so then, and I also think this could be phased in. Um, it could be an unfolding that could be rolled out over the course of years, like maybe starting with a part-time position, um, and then the first year being study and listening, pinpointing where the needs really are, um, researching comparable towns, drafting a mission statement, um, setting goals and seasonal and yearly calendars, um, future priorities may include taking advantage of our unique location here between the thriving art scene in the South End and the Cape. Um, we're really in, a, in kind of a cool spot that way. Um, and we can collaborate outside of Milton, obviously, but you know, there's the Wakefield State, it's right there. Dorchester has a lot of art centers, a lot happening there, and area colleges. We're right kind of in the thick of it. Looking further ahead, maybe we could plan to include strategizing to restore the robust art programs back into our schools, that would be. And so this is, you know, you can look at it in, in stages. So that's sort of what I'm thinking. Um, and again, I'm not just thinking it, but I'll, I'll send these around. So Sarah Truog, 
really in, you know, like endorses this. She's the now the assistant director. We know who she know is. Her. Right. You know Sarah um, at the library, and Joan Clifford from Mac. And um, I ask people to write about it. Don't write about me, although. You'll get an email from Dana Clancy, who's the director of, um, she's now the director of, uh, at BU of um, uh, the School of Art, I think. But anyway, she, you'll get a long email from her, and it's, it's actually really interesting, because she really knows what's happening here. She's lived here a long time, and she knows the art scene really well, and she knows me. So there's Joan Clifford, and then I did talk to Margaret LaForest from Quincy, who was just like, she's you got, director you got to do that. Oh right. my gosh, she right. just had so much to say. So she's on here, and then uh, Reverend Lisa Ward. I thought I'd talk to somebody from, from a church. Anyway, this is why I think um, this is important. Um, we got to stay on the top ten list, right? I mean, first of all, that's, we we can't. You mean as a community to to, to reside in, to all the, or from an arts point of view. Well, not just kind of rest on our laurels there, but but really kind of keep things moving. Um, and if we clarify our identity by highlighting the arts and the heritage, it's really valuable as a town. Um, and so in that way, yeah, you're staying ahead of the curve, I think. Um, and this is kind of low cost, big impact. The work adds real value by bumping up quality of life. It just does. Um, and it's not, it's sometimes a hard sell and you know, when people don't really understand how essential and pivotal the arts can be. Um, and I'm not talking just arts, but heritage and culture and all those pieces. So I think it's immeasurable. Um, and I think it's a good time. I think it's a popular idea. This is me going, can you write something this week? But I know there's a dozen people I could call tonight. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah. And over the last six months who I've talked to, they get excited. They're like, oh my god, yes. That would be so helpful. That would be so great. So I think it's, it's good timing. Um, so uh, I feel like I've watched that over the years, and I've seen people's eyes really open when they actually do get to an event, really actually uh, see a, a show or concert or public art or porch fest, I mean, that happened, which was well attended, but could be way more well attended if there was some, some, right, something to hold it. In um, Milton, it's restricted. Well, not restricted, but it's isolated to a small area of town where Quincy, it's citywide. Right. It goes, it goes from right. one point to the other. Right. And we're only a couple years in, so that, that can grow. Um, and we don't, the other thing is we don't really want to copy and paste the same stuff every year. We want to have a vision for the town, I think. Um, and that requires some thought. Um, what was success this year? What distinguished it? Um, what's your best memory of Milton? It's usually a community thing. Um, so I think focusing on that's really important. Another huge thing, you don't want to burn out your volunteers. And this is an easy way, an affordable way to really respect them and not overwork them by having a framework, streamlining events. And that's a big piece because that's, it's burnout because all these events that are volunteer run just fizzle. They just do. So um, that's a piece. Uh, and I think we can connect to all the departments. And for something that's big that requires municipal support, you're connecting with fire and police. And uh, it's, it's all, it, it just is all connected. And I think, you know, art is healthy. It dovetails with health and human services, wellness. It brings healing to people in pain and loss and addiction. It fits in there. It's a unifier. It wakes you up. It teaches you to listen. And in this particular climate, Dialogue is priceless, and I think that it's really necessary. Um, so I won't go too crazy into that because there's a lot to say about it, but I think it's, um, it's a really positive piece. Um, and then communication, I think, could be really needs to be elevated. Um, we've got calendars in town, but not a consolidated one, let alone one planned with a larger town <coughs> region. And um, Sarah talks about that in her comments. Um, there is Milton scene, town website, schools. We are, we are Milton actually has kind of a, some good stuff. It doesn't have everything, but it's got some good stuff on their calendar, but it's on Facebook, and I didn't even know that it's a year-round. Yes, there's, it is. Yeah, I, the, I sit on that committee. Yes, right, yes, I know. So that's great, but let's get... I was going to say sorry, Brian, but sorry to you. <laughs> no, it's all right. No, no. So again... You know I, Brian is. He never stops. Uh, I know, I know. I, so I think with planning, previously dispersed, unsupported, but compelling events will have a foundation to help their mission and build their audience 
because great things are happening here and they all really deserve a larger audience. Um, so I think with strategic planning, we could highlight the educational, historic, recreational, artistic, and cultural assets, boosting civic pride, tourism. I wrote about that in my proposal, so I don't need to say all that right now. But I, I do mention collaboration with Curry College and Milton Academy. I don't know, I'm not a, a, a finance person, but I know from town meeting that we kind of trying to leverage some uh, contribution to the tax base there. So, you know, there's that. Um, you can go on the pilot committee too, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> right, see, that's the, I'm overextended. So, um, so yeah, so please see these um, and read Dana's letter of support. And I, I guess lastly, I'll just say, it's not just an admin job, it's, um, or a graphic design job, or a PR job. It's really one that requires experience in the arts and event planning and curriculum, and it's partly educational. Um, there's a learning curve in art, and it's like a language where sometimes you don't really know that you're missing something until you, until you see it. So that's my, that's my spiel. Okay. Any questions? before I let you go. Anyone? So I know that you two have met. The three of you have already yeah, met on this, correct? Yes. So And Mike and I talked um, yeah. I know that. a while back. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd welcome any thoughts or comments or anything you want to do on this. I, I just have one. Um, so, so Frank, the, 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 as, you, as you described it, there's a heavy communications component to this. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that you um, inject that more into the title or the description do you think that it detracts too much from the art cultural cultural side if you if you kind of you know, highlight that communication side do you think it detracts it would it would certainly dilute it it would change it yeah. but it's worth talking about for sure yeah. I think if it's a part-time position it would really kind of <laughs> right you it might be a little flat out but right. and I wanted to say too like of course this is a job written for me, but I understand it would be put out for RP. So, so we'd have to make some decisions on this, a couple of the vision, a strategy, a way forward, yep. a funding source. Um, I would say that there are probably job descriptions similar to this in other communities of mm -hmm. our size that would, you know, we, we use a source called MMPA to, mm -hmm. to question other municipalities as to how they do things mm -hmm. and um, this unique idea if you will in, in this day and age I think it's becoming more popular um, so it wouldn't be hard to help qualify a, a job description and then get it through the personnel board and, and see if the Warren Committee would, would um, be able to fund something like this but yeah there's, there's a, a natural step steps in the process to, to get there but um, it, it would if I was a guessing person, I'd say there's already some type of general job description mm -hmm. in other communities that we could draw from, and uh, you know, obviously, add, add some of the uh, stuff we see here tonight. <coughs> so, in Quincy, you know, they're much larger than us, but in Quincy, I believe this comes out of the chamber. And like that's what Margaret actually. So Margaret directs Discover Quincy, mm -hmm. which comes out of the chamber, which is run by Tim Cahill. But I have, I've collaborated with her on many things for mm -hmm. full disclosure and I'm always impressed at the things they run everything from the porch fest to charter fest I just went to their artesian festival I mean they just run so many things that they have a nexus in a like Milton Music Fest I, I instead of we I, I just we collaborate with them a lot we talk back and forth just so uh, you have a lot of merit to what you say it's it's actually a topic that a lot of people probably touch the wall on, to quote our town administrator <laughs> who loves to use that term, but they don't realize they do it. Mm -hmm. And if you could create a vision that it, it's appealing and, and they understand it and embrace it, then mm -hmm. you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So, In Boston, it's a cabinet position. Right, so right it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and they just, were tying you know, public works construction projects into it. Um, if you travel through the Seaport District, you see all sorts of arts and culture going on inside the Four Point Channel, stuff like that, that worked through that cabinet position, so. It, same at Cambridge, same exact thing. So you, you are 100% correct in 
just citing the entities that you've touched on here tonight that Ian, not just the entities, the, cal the things that are on our calendar that we, that we enjoy every year, yeah. that yeah. Um, it only makes sense. So if you, I, I'm open to however you want, if you, if you two want to still stay engaged, if, you, if we want to have Michael start to look at the path for this. Or. Yeah, just hire someone I'm not. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, if I, mean, I could just make a few comments. I mean, yeah. Frank, I have to tell you, I, I was like, very impressed by your presentation. Oh, good. And I just, I hear words like, I wrote them down. St strategizing, vision, oversight, bridge existing gaps, themes, heritage, uh, essential, foundation. And, um, you know, just to, to touch upon one thing you mentioned, specifically Porch Fest, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a woman that I know that I've been friendly with my entire life. She's really into music. She, she, she's been in that world. She had some bands on her front lawn. And other people weighed in, and they, they wanted to know how they could get involved. Yeah. And they thought that they were excluded from it. When it wasn't, and, and there was, the problem there wasn't anything that she did or any, anything that somebody else did not do. No one knew where to go to get the information yes. to organize it. And yes. the one word that you did not um, Iterate, which I think sort of sums up what you're looking for is cohesion to yes. bring all of this together. God. And I love it because I think it's <laughs> yeah. a little disjointed and I think it's, yes. it's not anybody's fault. We just no. don't have anyone in position that's to do this. So I think it's great and I'm, I'm behind you. it 100%. Yeah. And that's a really good example. And that happens, I think, every week. It's like, wait, what? You did that? That happened? Like, right, people, right. People I mean, haven't seen <laughs> yeah. some amazing things. And Porridge Fest is a good example. Like, if we had had 100 bucks, or not 100 bucks, but if we had cohesion and a little, a little machine in place, there'd be a map. Because people are standing mm, there mm. like, I want to go see more. Yes. Where do I go? Right. Nobody knows. But in Brookline and in all the other Porridge Fest that I've been to, everybody's got a map. Mm -hmm. yeah, Quincy has posters in every oh, yeah, yeah. every music so venue just, in the city, that's everywhere. Easy stuff. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> one thing that I um, that I want to make note of, and I I don't know how we're going to proceed with this, but you mentioned the first year being one of study and planning and mm -hmm. and visioning for how all of this will happen so that there is continued vision and it fits in with the master plan and, and we it, it isn't reduced to arts or culture or but it's all of a piece and um, talks to our tradition as well as what's going on today I mean you mentioned health and human services and um, and the healing that can occur um, thread which to me says theme and so I just don't want us to lose sight of that as a board um, so that we jump into a position without really saying as you said this should be something that's uniquely for Milton so mm -hmm. thank you yeah. Yeah. can I ask a question I, I Frank I think it's a it's a great idea I agree with Tony you make a good case for the concept yeah. what I'm always concerned about is the budgetary mm -hmm. issues right. and mm -hmm. are we thinking it sounds like there's been a meeting. Are we thinking about this as a part-time position or a full-time position, or has anyone given any thought to the budgetary aspect of it? Because that's that's unfortunately the hard reality yeah, meeting right. up against sure. what's otherwise a good idea. Right. I think that's part and of And where there's steps. an established need, I think you made a good case, Frank. Yeah. That there's there's a need for this mm. yeah. cohesion and communication, right. and organizing all the different things that are going on. Well, I, I don't. I that's the other reason I'm not sure about. Um, just going ahead and not that we should we should definitely look at other towns job descriptions but um, I think that feasibility is part of that um, and so I would think it would have to be a, a, a part-time position the first year I can't imagine um, and, and but I'm not practiced at this sort of thing so my my um, feeling was uh, to, to give it a, a year at a, a part-time position that maybe was not um, difficult to fund necessarily and to do that study and then go forward, but I don't know what other ideas people have. So, so, so what you may be able to do is, is take it back further, and this may not fit exactly the way, the way Frank outlined it, but you might take it back and make it a, a contractor initially, so you don't mm. establish a position. Yeah, top Take it right. back as, as a consultant to kind of um, um, uh, dig into it, 
see what the need and the possibilities are, uh, and then present, and then based on those findings of some of a short-term consulting uh, uh, position, then make a proposal based on that. Mm -hmm. and, and I, similar to uh, uh, Melinda, you know, I, I see the progression here, the possible progression is, you know, consultant, see if, it's, see if it fills a need, right? Uh, not making it permanent, so you don't have a permanent position at that point. And then, and then based on that, uh, if that if that's successful, then maybe it morphs into part time, right? Or maybe it mor morphs directly into full time. But I kind of see the progression, possible progression: consultant, part time, full time. Um, if it all, if it, if the needs are all there, just in, in that, and that I think allows you to kind of um, uh, uh, kind of moderate the the budgetary impact along the way. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's that's a possibility. Okay. Yeah, and I mentioned because I know that we're the the youth group is also looking at potentially a youth director, mm -hmm. so that's potentially two new positions, and the schools and are already talking about new positions. So there's there's always a limit on what the finance is going to be in any given year. So right. not to put too much of a damper on it, but I, mm -hmm. to me that seems like that's going to be a challenge. Is you just said that that even though I know you've already been to the personnel board on that potential part time youth worker. That may be the way for us to go there as well. Start as a consultant first and then see if it works into a part time position before we put it on the books. Other is there is there though isn't there let's go up to some I thought the town account aren't there some limitations to us for the DOR on what we can use consultants yes. for versus right am I correct, right? Yes, if it's if it if it if it looks like right, it's okay, if it, right, if it looks like you might right. right. But that's we're working through that okay. process. Okay. Okay. Know, right. but, you, but, <laughs> but it 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 makes sense, and from the consultant point of view, you might actually be able to get it off the ground even faster. Versus, okay, mm -hmm. so why don't I'm going to ask the town administrator to kind of look around at some other, and in the okay. mean, my, personally, I will have a conversation with Mrs. LaForest and. Okay. Glean some more from her about this, but yeah, um, yeah. Okay. anything else? And then I know the two of you, if there's anything else, I mean, you've already done a little background on this already, so whatever you want to add to this, I'm more than comfortable with. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if our Chamber of Commerce would be willing to fund it, but uh, you, I mean, there's a, I mean, pro, you never know, there's, there's, there's ways. Mm, I was looking at us on that site today. It benefits yeah. them as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. The one word that you have used a lot in this room tonight is vision. So yeah. your vision is only limited by your own imagination. So yeah, let's I made our, this or up. collectively, <laughs> or collectively <laughs> our own imagination. So let's 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 at least start to look at this and even the Copeland Foundation. That's another thought. I got to stay away from that one. <laughs> yeah, so so what what are we saying? Our next steps are just so I'm think, clear if I'm think, supposed to be doing something or I think Michael for Michael to kind of look around okay. at other communities and see who they have you know because even in my mind just from a town position you know, who do they answer to you know where do they fit into our scheme of mm -hmm. the plan as we hear so much when we go to the personnel board you know how does it fit into this so that's mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't mean that I'm not saying that as a it's just the, yeah. those are, that's the world we live in yes. here in, in, in Am I right, Katie, in that, right? I mean, somehow it would have to fit in to the point, if you were to create a job, it would have to have operational, you'd have to make it so it worked. Yeah, we have, we have a similar situation going on with the part-time team coordinator. Yeah. Does it fall under the police department, under their activities, police athletic league? Does it fall under the parks department? You know, um, is it an after-school program? It's, mm. you have to work through all that stuff, and who does that person report to in an org chart, and the funding mechanism for it is okay. uh, select what common said. So I'll, I'll get the I'll ball rolling on yeah. So at least we can start to look around at our neighbors and try to kind of get an idea of who else that has this. And please stay in contact, at least with, 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 with Michael, okay. to kind of update okay. him on anything that Good. you find as well, and we'll, Good. we'll go from there. All right. I'm going to pass these around. You want to just? Okay. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. Um, and then, like I said, there is a. Because they have a dedicated yeah. and more to you who? location. Thank you, Frank. And Katie, have you two good? Katie and Tony, you have any more questions? Are you guys good? I'm good. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank so you. So, one more question that Mike just asked. And that would be to me. Yeah. Um, 
Well, he did use the word that has been. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for your, again for your patience. These could be long nights. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Good presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to go back to item nine, which is a discussion. This is a follow-up to a letter that we drafted to National Grid relative to the ongoing lockout. As we know, and I, even I could not think I could have imagined the things that have happened in the weeks that have passed, but um, we need to take some type of action on the 60-day moratorium that we put on that's due to expire on the 17th. So. Mr. Farrington, you brought this forward. I'm going to yield to you first to comment. Oh, thank like. you, Chair. So that is set to expire a week from today. Uh, I will read, uh, I think, the pivotal portion of the letter. Uh, the driving factor in our decision is the safety of Milton's residents and its visitors. We believe that that safety is undermined by less experienced temporary employees. We urge both sides to continue to negotiate, and we encourage an end to the lockout. Uh, I would I would um, put forth that that those three sentences are just as true today as they were uh, on August 17th. In fact, perhaps more so. Uh, and I would move that we extend uh, the moratorium. Um, I know that we're we're still in the discussion stage, but my position is that we extend this moratorium uh, on all non-emergency work permits in the town of Milton for an additional 60 days with the potential for carve-outs uh, for what you had touched upon, uh, Mr. Chair, which was, you know, if, if somebody uh, loses heat and they need heat. In fact, I would, I would argue that that probably rises to the level of an emergency. But um, I'm squarely in the camp that I think that nothing has changed uh, and that it is a public safety issue and that we have less experience under trained workers right now uh, on the front lines, which um, compromises public safety so that we, you know, I think it makes sense to continue with this moratorium for an additional 60 days. And if the situation changes at all um, substantially, you know, we as a board can come together and, and, and vote to end it. But uh, I'm, in, I'm in the camp that 60 days additional makes sense. So I'm in a little bit of a different world, but I'll sit back different and listen to anyone else's comments first. Because a lot is going to happen in the next 60 days here just because of where we're going seasonally. Right. And <coughs> as we saw in the incident with Columbia Gas, because of the number of people, even though it's completely unrelated to this, um, one of the main, if you fall closely on the public safety side, even though the governor and the National Guard stepped up to give out electric heaters and hot plates, each fire chief in each of those communities, as well as the fire marshal, had grave reservations about doing this. And every winter in many communities, and we've not been immune in this community, tragedies happen where people die, a house is going to fire, or because they have no heat. And a person having no heat in their house, and if you watch the news tonight on Channel 5, it's a highlighted story in Woburn of a woman who had no heat, a senior who had no heat. And in light of a slew of protesters outside her house, National Grid came and restored her heat. And it was 75 today. It's going to be 50 for high on Sunday. And having seen the number of seniors that live here, just, I think that we need to give a lot of thought to this before we put 60 more days on it. I'm actually more inclined to draft a letter and send it to the governor and ask him, and I've said this to Michael, that just as Mayor Menino, I think it was, I don't know who did this in a labor strike, a labor issue wasn't a strike, it was an issue several years ago when the DNC came to town. They brought in an arbitrator overnight and they settled it. But this, meeting once every eight days or once every 10 days. I think since the 60 day, days we signed this, they haven't even met five times. How are we gonna settle this? And if we're in January with this going on in a significant population in this community that has gas heat, 
I think that we need to be a little bit stronger than just extending this for 60 days. I just Well, as I said, I'm willing to entertain like a car vote where if there is no heat and there's a hardship that we would extend the permit for that hardship. I don't think it's extending. I think it's just an issue. Let's talk to Chase about this. I mean, like this, is, this would be whether you issue a permit or you don't to put gas into a house. But from a public safety perspective, that's going to happen in this town, and it's going to happen more than once. If in the next 60 days, if we go 60 days with this lockout continuing, 60 days brings us into, into January. Right, I understand. Yeah, I mean, I think the issues sometimes get confused. I mean, there's, there's gas lines that are in existing homes, mm -hmm. and somehow they lose that connection, and that connection needs to be reinstalled, and then there's running gas lines into new, newly constructed homes. Well, that's another point. So there are at least two residents that have, I've talked to that have erected homes in this town that are waiting for their gas to be put in that can't move into their homes because they don't have any gas. Well, I mean, I, I understand. I mean, there, sacrifices do need to be made somewhere by some people. Otherwise, that there's, this thing has no teeth. So I understand that, and I'm sympathetic to those individuals, certainly. The last person I want to be is the bad guy that prevented gas heat into somebody's home. But at the same time, it comes back to the public safety issue, uh, which I think is sort of outweighs. It's a risk reward for property. You have public safety on both ends. So you have public safety on the lockup, but you also have public safety on people without gas, without heat. And that's a true life threatening situation once we get into winter. I, I still think there's a bit of a disconnect, and maybe we're having two different conversations. I'm not advocating that we <laughs> prevent people from not having heat where they need it. I'm saying we would issue a hardship permit if they lose a connection to gas, which I think would rise to the level at, as an emergency permit. That, that's what I'm suggesting. So if I could ask, I don't know who, whether it's Mike or, or Richard or Tony who would answer this, but um, so if, if, if people who are without heat, without gas, that would be a hardship, that would be allowed, what would not be allowed? Under the moratorium. So, for example, newly constructed homes okay. that are looking for a gas hookup. Okay. Someone that has existing gas service and loses it in the middle of winter, I don't want that individual right. to go without heat. So, so this would be for any new construction or new hookups, rather? That wouldn't, to me, that doesn't qualify as, a, as an emergency. Okay. And, and, and is there anything else that this moratorium No one's residing in those homes yet, no, is what I'm trying to say. Is there anything else with this, that this moratorium would, would, would apply to, I guess? I think what we have in place now allows only grade ones, am I correct? Uh, grade twos, if you read through National Grid's language, grade twos are leaks not to the scale of a grade one, but something that has to be addressed within 12 months. You know, when did you know it? I knew it tonight. It has to be fixed by, you know, October ninth of next year, right? That's a grade two. Um, I've been reading through it, and I know Selectman Farrington's been reading through all the different logistics of what is the difference between a grade one and a grade two, and, and what what comes after. I believe they go to four grades? Three. Three. Um, there's A, Bs, and Cs in there, too, as yeah. well. There's, 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 um, well, just to touch upon that. So the code of mass regulations, there's three um, gas leaks that are defined in the Code of Mass Regulations. Um, I did not see a further breakdown of those three. Um, it's one, two, and three. And as Mike touched upon, uh, a grade one gas leak is certainly um, uh, the biggest emergency that creates the biggest danger and the biggest hazard. I know I witnessed one last week right in front of my house. <laughs> um, and then there's the grade two, which might further qualify and better define. And then there's grade three, which is the least, uh, the least hazardous. So I'm okay with that, but I still think we need to have something a little bit to protect our residents in here. So I'm wondering if if we give some type of leeway. I don't know if Chase wants this responsibility, but if, <coughs> if we, if Chase would have come to us, uh, DPW would say, I think this is one we should move on. Am I putting too much on him, or do you think that might be? No. Um, hmm. So what are we talking about, though? Because I... So the, the current letter that we have, am I right? Tell me if I'm wrong. It allows only for grade ones. Correct. Emergencies. Oh, grade right. one emergencies. But I'm, I'm, I'm 
more comfortable allowing, because there are going to be curveballs in there, just on a no heat issue where we may get an application, someone needs heat or they go to the DPW, they need a connection or a service, I'm, I'm more inclined to have Chase, who's our representative, our DPW director, who's looking out for our residents as we are, to be able to at least weigh in and say, I think in this case we should do this. I'm 100% behind that. I have no problem with that at all. What, what's most important to me, um, and which is something I would e uh, emphasize that, that we do as a board, and I think we have been doing, but as a town, that we're consistent in our application. Because I, without getting into the details, I can, I'm happy to speak to it after, but over the weekend I got into a situation where I witnessed an inconsistency in the way that this policy was applied, and it made us frankly look bad as a town. And it wasn't anyone's fault. Frankly, I felt that the fault lied more with National Grid than it did with the town of Milton, but it there was an inconsistency there. So I would just emphasize that moving forward, if we do put this in place, and I think it makes sense to do so, that we also um, communicate, Mike, between John Thompson, Chase, yourself, and us as a board, so that we know who's doing what and when they're doing it, frankly. Because Mick, I disagree with that. I don't think we should need to be in. It's making us operational. We're not operational department heads. That's what Michael does. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I'd like to be in other communication, but okay. Go ahead. So, so just in terms of mechanics, so are we talking about delegating, um, delegating exceptions to the town administrator and the DPW director? Are we talking about this board convening whenever there is a request or trying to convene within two days of a request? No. Um, right. We wouldn't be, right? So this would be really delegating, I guess, if there are exceptions, delegating to the town administrator or the DPW director. The, the the authority to make that determination on our behalf is that is that uh, I think that's fair that to say but about? I think that we're also defining what that exception would be we're defining that right now that exception would be somebody that has existing gas heat that then loses access to that gas heat during the winter months qualifies as an emergency which we would make an exception for so um Go ahead. I, I and I I'm Safety is very important, and I don't know how to judge that. I'm not an engineer. I don't know anything about that. But um, I just want us to acknowledge that there is a, f a, a financial hardship for families that are trying to sell a home and get into a new home if they can't, if there's no right. heat. And that's a considerable amount of money. They, you know, they, they may, the sales of homes may fall through, and, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't do this, but I think it needs to be acknowledged, and I guess I had a question about people who you, you spoke with. I mean, I know one family who's moving in Milton, um, and I don't, I don't know what their situation is, but that brought that to mind. Um, so I think for some people it will be a hardship, and, and you use the word sacrifice, and it will be. So. so help me understand. So they're moving from so, one location yeah. to another. Right. So so home. if they if you have a house and you need yeah. to sell it and you need to be out, you need another house to move into. Right. So if you've built a house and it has no gas and it's going to be winter, <laughs> yes. then that means you're renting another home or you're renting a, you know do, doing something. So that's 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 extra cash outlay. And I think I just think that needs to be acknowledged by the board. That's all. I agree with you. I I mean I just. A, I just don't think we should be operational. B, I just want to give our DPW director, if he feels he needs the ability to say, okay, I'm going to grant this, he can do it. Because there are going to be people who are going to, and I didn't even think of that one. Just, but that's, you brought up a good point. Someone sells a house, then move, the new person moves in the house, they need a gas service. It's going to be November before we know. This 60-day moratorium brings it right into, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I feel well, like a dog. Well, you mentioned something about do, being stronger about this. Yeah. I, I just I, don't know what we could do, but it seems like more than a moratorium is I want to write a letter to the now. governor and ask him to intervene. We were talking about a major. What's going on with the AG's um, investigation? They, they were supposed to be that's, doing. That's a little bit different, though. Yeah, okay. so I, I think it's going to take a little bit longer, but I, I think this is more... I'm thinking maybe we should write a letter to the governor, ask him to make the two entities come to the table. I mean, I've never seen, I mean, we've been involved in labor negotiation. I've never seen, like, once a week, once every time. It's, how are you going to get it done? You just. Right. It, well, it highlights to me, actually, that there's no intention to get it done. 
I, I hear you I, on that. I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be that stark, but um, if you're not meeting, what does that, you know, what does that indicate, really? Yeah, but I, the only thing I would, I would, I would say to that is, um, I'm not trying to discount or discredit that, but do we know that for a fact? No, we don't know that for a fact. But they're but, not meeting. But, but yeah. meetings oh, it's publicized. You said, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. Okay. It's public. Well, you, it's public. You, you said that, so I thought it was a, a public thing. But, um, so I, I guess I, I don't know. I, I would be interested in talking about writing a letter to the the governor. I think it makes it, it. It can't hurt us. I don't think it can hurt this. Ian, it helps the residents who we were elected to serve. Can you imagine if, if Michael came to us and said, "Yeah, he's, he's our negotiator." He said, eh, "I'm not going to. I'll see them in six weeks." You know, like we, we wouldn't allow it for two seconds. And not to say that he has, but he's the executive head of government for the Commonwealth. This is a public safety issue. Look what happened to Woburn yesterday. Look, you know, just that that thing in front of my house. I was ironic. I couldn't. He texted me as soon as it, I'm like, "Yeah, it's at my front door." I couldn't believe it when it happened. But it was, it was a mess in minutes, both from a labor perspective, and, and I sympathize. I know many people that work for National Grid. I've known, had friends going all the way back to Boston Gas. It just, but this is, the only someone's got to bring these two people in a room and say, you got to do this. For the sake of the Commonwealth and the citizens of this Commonwealth, you need to do this. And for us, we represent the citizens of the town of Milton. So I have no problem often sending a letter to the governor asking, please, can you bring these two parties to the table? And I wouldn't be just surprised that if we did that, then other communities might not do the same thing. Because I'm with, I'm with Melinda. I don't know how else you're going to get this done. Go ahead, yeah, Katie. And I don't I'm sorry. Tony, maybe this is for you or someone else. I, other communities have put in place something similar to what right. we have with temporary moratorium. Have you or has anyone looked into what other communities have done with the winter approaching? We've all got to be in the same boat here. Do we know if others are... Well, the Boston City Council touched on some of these same issues, and I believe the City Council also pushed to have them get back to the table to negotiate. They did. I will qualify, though, that hardship letters aren't sent to the town. They're sent to, the, they're sent to National Grid, and it's determined by National Grid what warrants a hardship and what does, doesn't. I would not like to put Chase in the precarious position of deciding which okay. ones he considers to be hardships and which one he doesn't. Um, I think when it's decided by National Grid that a hardship is in fact and should be granted, that the town accept that professional opinion mm -hmm. and, and grant it. I don't want to get into the, you know, whether the house is occupied or unoccupied. I think that's a slippery slope for public works director. It's right. just, I think that the, they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the utility. And they have a mechanism. Right. So they, are okay. you saying, Mike, that they, the National Grid would send a letter to the town in connection with looking for a permit, that this is a hardship. Right. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, they, they yeah. file to, and then Chase makes a decision on whether or not to issue the permit on a hardship. Okay. And that's not always a consistent, you don't always get the same results from National Grid um, oh. all the time. In, Sometimes in, you don't even get the request. History. Yeah. <laughs> they just go out and do it. And that's the issue that I ran into over the weekend. I don't want to you know, speak to that. That doesn't have that much bearing on the discussion today or right here. but. I mean, to me, the situation is, as I said, not only, I think, is it still true, but it's more true now than it was on August 17th. Um, it's a public safety issue. And if we were to lift this moratorium um, and this sort of work were to be done by undertrained or less experienced workers, you know, the likelihood of a potential problem, I think, is greater than not. And, and that's really where, where I'm coming from on my argument. And I understand and I'm sympathetic to the other side of it. But again, it's it's a sacrifice needs to be made somewhere. Mm -hmm. It just has to be. And it's that's how I, how I look at it. Well, and as you said, we're looking at perhaps <coughs> gas being put into new homes incorrectly. We look at the work of Diane Ferrari. This could impact her. And much of what she does each and every winter is fuel and heat and getting gas into people's homes. So that's where I, I'm just, I'm forgetting my public safety background. I'm just thinking as a member of this board, our first and foremost responsibility is to the people who live here. And I sympathize with the, the national. So given that, I'd go along with 30 days. I'm more than happy with any hardship that comes to Chase that if he feels, and I'm not, I know you're saying, I, I'll be happy however he thinks he wants to do it. And then on top of that, I. 
don't see how it could hurt us to draft a letter and ask Governor Baker, like, can you please bring these entities to the table for the sake of the Commonwealth? So, so I agree with both of those, um, both of those points. Um, I'm, I'm a little, I, I do agree with both of those points. I'm a little uncomfortable imposing sacrifice on people who don't, <laughs> who are uh, essentially innocent bystanders right. um, in this. So, uh, so I think that's a, I think that's a moderate, I think that's a moderate proposal. I, I, I agree, Richard, on both of those points. Kate, you know, someone want to put this in the form of a motion? Or do we want to, uh, go ahead. Um, I was struck by what you said about National Grid may, you know, they, they have these hardship cases come in, but we don't always get the notification sometimes uh, the, the work is just done. And if we could in some way be ensured that that won't happen, um, I, I think that would also go a long way, and I don't know how we do that. Yeah, I don't know how, given the state of how they're running right now, I'm, I'm guessing that what Tony saw is that they came in and they're doing an operation without telling anybody. And that's going to happen. I, I know it's not the norm, but it can happen. It would be very difficult for us to police it, but it's, okay. it's going to happen. Well, one thing I, I'd like to add, I think that might clarify this issue a little bit, Mike, and um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong because this is your world and not mine, but... Um, uh, there's a term for it that, uh, that that is used to describe this: the um, the line in or stubbing. The stub. stub. Yes. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So what happens a lot of times is it's on private property, right? There'll be a w national grid work that has to take place on private property. Mm -hmm. That part of the hardship, the town is not notified because they're not access accessing the public right away. Mm -hmm. um, there's no trench being dug in the street, there's no connection, there's no tie-in at the street, it's, it's stubbing it to the house for a later connection. And they're free to do that work? That's private property, correct. Right. And they don't have to notify the town. Thanks. It's when they want to pull a permit uh, to occupy the public right away um, that Chase and John Thompson and, and others at Public Works would be notified. So, so we, we don't interfere with anything that, that, that any resident does on their own private property, it's only with respect to the public property. Correct. Yeah, once you cross a tree lawn, once you touch the street, once you... Okay, so to keep this moving, I'll even make them, I'll make a motion to extend this for 30 days with the caveat that in the, in the event of an, any agency that comes before the town, I don't want to say the DPW to the town, the DPW director can act on that accordingly. And then I'll even go so far as to say that I think we should draft a letter to Governor Baker asking him to intercede on bringing these two parties to the table, the union and national grid, to end this lockout for the betterment of the citizens of the Commonwealth, at least for us, the residents of Milton and this Commonwealth. I'll, I can actually have no problem starting to draft it myself. If you want, then I'll send it around. You can all comment. On. I just want to make it short and sweet. I don't want to get it really. So I put that out there as a motion, and if anyone wants to second it, then we can, then we can change it, whatever. Second. So, so I was, any further discussion on it? You all right with that? I can live with 30 days. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, now, 11, am I going off? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, gonna go to 11, item 11 quickly. This is a, uh, this is just to ratify the motion, motion for ratification that the proclamation I brought to celebrate Milton. If I could just have a motion to ratify that. I'll move to ratify the, um, the proclamation for celebrate Milton. Second. Any discussion? It was a great day. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 12, um, approval for street sign marker for uh, Milton veteran Sergeant John T. Carotta. Um, I believe everyone's seen the square. This is a motion to approve the design and location for the street marker for veteran Sergeant John T. Carotta Square for the installation of this sign at the corner of Troll Lane and Norman Street. 
What's the date on that again? What's the date? Uh, as close to Veterans Day as possible. Okay. So we uh, come up Public Works has okay. ordered it. It's being manufactured as okay. we speak. So I move that we approve the design and location for a street marker for Veteran Sergeant John T. Carrada Square for installment at the corner of Truro Lane and Norman Street. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 13, the approval of one-day liquor license for the Milton Club. Um, this is a motion to approve a one-day liquor license for the Milton Club on October 13th for a PTO fundraiser. Um, motion to approve a one-day liquor license for the Milton Club at 193 Central Avenue, Milton, for October 13th, 2018, for a Pierce PTO fundraiser. We, before we vote, just a quick comment slash question. I think I know the answer, otherwise it wouldn't be on the agenda. But the turnaround time on that is just 48 hours, is that right? On a liquor license? Yeah, provided that the, the request is submitted. This one is no, that No. No, that no. would be if it was part of the special permit. I see. Right. Okay. If, if, there was, if, if the caterer had a liquor license, yes. the police department and this board would have to be notified within... 48 hours okay. of okay. that event. Right on. This is separate. This is a, a, a one-day liquor license, not, so, a, not a caterer with a liquor license. So I think I touched, did I actually touch, are you just you and I talking about this? I, I, I had a discussion with John Flynn about this because this was kind of a um, two-fold because I think initially we thought that everything was going to be on our caterer's license there, and it seems operationally they've decided to apply for some one days. So under the one days, under Chapter 138, any entity can apply for up to 30 in a year. Or 28, I believe. 20, is it 30. 20, 30. This board 30. approved 30 yeah, in 30, January. 30 in a, okay. in a calendar okay. year. Of 2018, we've yeah. moved it. Mm -hmm. We moved it back to the statute. The statute's under 138, it's 30. Um, so that's those applications come here. <coughs> they go to the selectman's office. They go to the police chief. They have to be signed off by the chief. He I makes saw, the right the yeah. determination. Then it goes back to, to be finally approved by with the licensing authority it has to be approved here. So on top of that, I know they have two applications. One for October twenty. Correct. Uh, yeah. If I might add, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Our Introduce. office received this application that this board is going to approve or not approve for the 13th. In addition, one for the 20th, 25th, 27th, and 28th. The 25th, 27th, and 28th can be heard on the October 22nd Board of Selectmen meeting. The 20th, we know about, but we weren't notified in enough time to get it on this agenda. Mm. But just for the record, we are in receipt of that, and it may have to be approved at the 22nd. Right, for which the has 20th. happened in the past, which I get that. What event was that again, Mike? On the 20th, yeah. the Cunningham PTO? Cunningham PTO. That's what it was, right. Yeah. Okay. Cunningham PTO is coming. It, we didn't receive it in enough time to get on this agenda. This board won't meet until the 22nd, so it will be a post-event approval by this board on the 22nd. And um, Michael's office has, or the offices made the manager of the Milton Cub aware that on one day's the turn on, you're going to have to get these to us as quickly as possible. Yeah, right. Actually, can I make it just a right, sure. second Absolutely. Melinda's motion? Because I don't think okay. we had a second. But the way it's written on the public agenda, it just says approval one day liquor license, the Milton Club. It doesn't have a date on it. So can't we approve the 13th and the 20th tonight? If we I, have the request. See, I wasn't sure if we could. Okay. If we ca Can we do both tonight? Do you have the application? For the twentieth? Yeah, we yeah, it's I have it electronically. I think we can. Well. That's what I thought we were gonna do. Because there's I no we're date gonna, on I the agenda, we, so I Yeah, I, I thought we were gonna yeah. I thought we were gonna do them both tonight. Okay. Yeah, I mean we, we have receipt of it. It's it's just needs to be signed by myself and the police chief if this board approves it. So I I'm gonna if maybe you could change your yes. would you amend your motion? Okay. okay. I will Thank amend you, Katie. Where are you looking here? I will amend my motion. I'm looking at the public agenda right here. In oh, oh, I see. I see. Okay. Um I move to approve a one day liquor license for the Milton Club at 193 Central Avenue, Milton, for October 13th, 2018, for a Pierce PTO fundraiser, and uh, also to approve a one-day liquor license for the Milton Club for October 20th, 2018, for the uh, Cunningham, C Cunningham PTO, PTO, fundraiser. PTO fundraiser. Do we have a second? Seconded. Any discussion? 
So I think so. I think it's important to point out that um, uh, at least one resident, maybe more than one resident, has raised a question uh, that I think Richard addressed, uh, in 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 Michael uh, kind of addressed. But I but I but I think but I think it's important that 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 I that we acknowledge that that issue was raised. The question was raised was whether and whether that's within the special permit, um, and and I think the answer is that it's outside the special that's permit. Correct. Um, so I think that's the answer to the, mm -hmm. the, the, the question that was raised by residents um, on this. So I think it's, it's just important to, to acknowledge that. Yeah. So I was going to do that, and oh, I was going to come back. So sorry, that's okay. So, so just, so just proact I had a conversation, as Michael did, with John Flint just because of some questions I had about it. And then with regard to the special permit, um, we had, Michael did it. Michael had um, Joe Prondack Joe wrote an excellent yeah. response mm -hmm. back, which we sent to that resident, outlining that, this, he's working under the old non conformity that, that the special permit hasn't even kicked in yet. So, um, and John was comfortable with that as well. So I'm comfortable with where we are as far as how th that's being operated right now. But there was a follow-up question about, has there been a building permit pulled for the work in the basement? I don't think they've done any structural work down there. So I think the answer, I think the answer to that question is no. Okay, so permit yeah. doesn't then, a per, a, just the pulling of the permit doesn't actually um, make the special permit conditions kick in. Yeah, Joe, okay. Joe Prondack was quite clear with me and in his email yeah. that they're still running that building under the non-conforming pre-existing. Okay, right. I um, just... Just wanted yeah. to make sure because that was a follow-up question that I saw. Thank you. Okay, that all right? Yeah. Okay. So, did we vote? <laughs> no, okay. we no. Yeah. Did we vote? So, so motion. Okay. So, any other any other second. discussion? Did I second? We it's it's yes, seconded. Okay. Second. Katie seconded. seconded. It's like so, a ninja over there. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Item 14, Boards of Committees appointment. Um, the motion will appoint Chase Berkeley. I need to, uh, the LA, this is, is this, this is the, to add him, right? This is his yes. first, oh yeah, okay, so. I'll move that we appoint Chase Berkeley, DPW Director to the Local Emergency Planning Committee for term ending on June 30th, 2019. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Aye. it's unanimous. Okay, so I have item 15. Um, a motion to appoint one member of the Board of Selectmen and two residents to the Traffic Mitigation Committee for a term of one year. I know who the Board of Selectmen member is. Do we have, I just didn't look through all the stuff. Do we have two residents or just one at this point? So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, what, what I was going to suggest, uh, because it hasn't been widely publicized, I was going to suggest that on the residents, when we only have one form, one volunteer form in, but we have other residents who have expressed interest, I was going to suggest we defer that at least until the next meeting to to allow uh, you know that in, this interest to be further um, uh, further enhanced and we get you know maybe some more volunteer forms in and some more interest and so we have you know other people because I know other people are um, as I said there are other people who have expressed interest they just haven't got their forms in yet so I was just going to suggest that on the residents we defer it um, for for our next meeting um, <coughs> I can tell you on the on the um, for the um, for the uh, member of the board, uh, member of the board, I, I I I would throw my hat in the ring for the for the uh, the chief of police's designee, uh, Chief King has Lieutenant has Alba. yep suggested Lieutenant Alba, um, Mike Dennehy has has uh, su has signed up and suggested himself or uh, and although acknowledging that we we'll, we would bring in. Um, uh, the DPW director and the and, and uh, the town engineer um, frequently and as needed, um, and then um, we are on the verge of getting the appointees from the planning board and the um, the um, master plan implementation committee. We just uh, have to have some notices, but but I think by their next meeting we'll have that, those as well. So. So I think we can we can we can get this committee at least half populated, um, and then and then um, and then finish it up at the next meeting. So okay. That, that would be my suggestion. So would, would do you want us to do you want a motion to appoint you now tonight? Um, I, I I I that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. So I'll move that we appoint <laughs> Michael Zulus to the Traffic Mitigation Committee for a term of one year. Second. Any discussion? 
Any Thank opposition? Thank you very much. I'm glad, I'm glad you're not looking for any other volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from me. So, um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So just for full disclosure, I did have one resident who reached out to me today and I, who was interested, but it's a resident we just appointed to the traffic commission and commit. And I was like, my thought was, because I've said this too publicly, I really want to see you kind of take your own thing, let the trap, have them not really, even though the police chief and the DVR may have to consult back, mm -hmm. but not have them bleed into each other. So mm -hmm. that was my thought to him and he okay. understood that. And, okay. Okay. And do we want to go ahead and appoint Mike and uh, yeah, Lieutenant somebody? Alba um, as well? Do you want to go back? Do you want to? Yeah. Um, so it's uh, Lieutenant Mark Alba from the Police Department and Town Administrator, right. Michael Dennehy. Um, I'm also moved to appoint uh, Lieutenant Alba from the Milton Police Department and Michael Dennehy, Town Administrator, to the Traffic Mitigation Committee for a term of one year. And that's starting today one year or how are we doing the terms uh, um, I, I, I would think it's today okay but, um, yeah we're gonna need a full year yeah this in three months that's right we'll be out of the woods no problem that's right. I'll second, the motion. <laughs> second thank you any further discussion is that everybody do we get them do you want to add Melinda <laughs> all those in favor hi 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 spent a bit time on I'm only kidding I know Okay, 16, this is an easy one. Boards of committees, this is just a reappointment and this is a two year because their last thing is gonna be the legacy. So I figure it's gonna be two years before we're ready for that. I said, ask Michael if we just make this two years so we don't have to go back to it. Um, this is to reappoint the 350th committee. Um, sure. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> I move to reappoint Linda Lee Sheridan, Mary McLaughlin, Kathy Fagan, Hyacinth Critchlow, Kevin Donahue, Emma Jean Moulton, Elizabeth Neville, Wallace Sisson, and Joanne Trifoni. Trifoni, yeah. Thank you, Trifoni. To the 350th committee for a term of two years. Two years. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 17. This is Boards of Committees. This is an appointment to. So I'm not familiar with this. Is a your in service and safety committee? This is a DPW committee? Correct. Okay, so I know that uh, one to all of these are DPW employees. So if I could have a motion on this one here. I move to reappoint Thomas McCarthy, John Calabro, Dean Alexander, and Robert DiPietro to the In Service Safety and Training Committee members mm -hmm. for a term of one year. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 18 and 19 are done. Mr. Dennehy, the floor is yours. <coughs> Thank wow. you, Mr. Chairman, members uh, of the board. Um, just a couple of things, and, and forgive me if I get chronologically out of order. We're in a yard waste collection week. I can't stress enough how important it is that people uh, try to promote this um, stream of waste. Um, we're seeing what's going on in the salt waste industry where landfills are getting um, full at capacity, and I think that industry is going to start having to rail trash out of our boundaries in Massachusetts, which is going to be uh, more expensive. We all understand what's going on in the recycling industry. Uh, there was a quick report uh, that John Driscoll reported me today. I didn't catch it on BZ, but there are municipalities that are starting to get away from recycling. Recycling is starting to cost more than uh, trash. I didn't hear that. I'm going to try to follow up with, with Mr. Driscoll on that story. But um, yard waste, curbside yard waste collection program is the repurposing of this material. It's heavy. It gets wet, it, it weighs a lot. If you were to bring it to a solid waste facility, that costs a lot of money for tax, tax people and it uses up a lot of space at landfills. Um, so that, I can't stress that enough. We have, uh, today we, we collected, we collect tomorrow and then we do it Halloween week. Um, we have coordinated with uh, Sunrise Cabinet to make sure that the trucks are off the streets early on Halloween night so that we don't interrupt um, all our trick-or-treaters. But I just stress the fact that this time of year, any person that can keep that material out of the solid waste stream um, will we'll pay benefits going forward. Um, October 20th, Mike's, K, Mike's 5K to crush substance abuse. I know this board has a group that I'm trying to join if hockey doesn't get in the way. <laughs> um, but it's 10 a.m. at Cunningham Park, um, second event. Um, unbelievable turnout last year. 
Emily Martin from our office uh, spoke, spoke to it often, and I know there was a lot of people uh, from the town who worked hard to get it off the ground, and I think it's, it's really taken off this year. So that's on the 20th. Obviously, we have the town meeting uh, October 22nd at the high school, uh, 7.30. Uh, first night, uh, 17 articles, warrants went out this weekend to everyone's homes. Um, expect uh, full attendance, full quorum for clerk and moderator Hiss. One night. Uh, can't guarantee I that. I'm not going to rise on a yeah. um, two, two other, three other things actually. Uh, early election voting, I met with the clerk today. Early uh, voting is going to take place for our statewide elections um, on o October 22nd through November 2nd, uh, Monday to Friday. Monday to Thursday is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Fridays are 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. There are three other days, uh, October 27th, 29th, and November 1st, where there'll be extended hours at Town Hall. October 27th is a Saturday. Uh, they're gonna open uh, Town Hall. It's gonna be in the Blue Room. Um, remarkable numbers from the 2016 election. 37% of the people that voted in this town voted early in 2016. Mm -hmm. So making preparations for that now, um, they will have taken over the Blue Room for that um, two week period and look forward to a uh, smooth election, um, early voting, and then obviously the election on November 6th. Um, Natalie Fultz, East Milton resident, uh, will turn 100 years old on October 16th. They are having an event for her uh, next Monday in this building, which is great. Um, so I think we're all invited to stop in and, and wish her a happy 100th. Um, and then the last one's a bit remorseful. Arthur McNulty um, passed away Tuesday, longtime member of uh, Council on Aging. Um, I played Mahjong with him three weeks ago back here in the Council on Aging. So a wonderful, wonderful individual. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Um, and donations in his honor can be sent to <coughs> friends of Council on Aging. So I uh, hope he rests in eternal peace. We agree. Thank you. He's a wonderful man, as is his wife. I feel my sympathies to her. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I was at the Shattuck Awards in Boston on Friday, and I saw Commissioner Gross again, and he was... Um, Overwhelmed at what the reception he got here was beyond anything he could have uh, expected, and because Katie wasn't here, I'm going to set up something special. Katie gets around. We're going to bring him back. He I'm sorry, back. I couldn't make that. I, was, it was, I saw the pictures that Mike posted. And he did it a looks good like job. It was a very nice event. He took a lot of heat. He, yeah. he took a lot more than I thought he was going to take, but some it was very, very tough good. questions. He did. He yeah. answered some really tough questions, which I didn't expect him to do, but he did. And he's a good man, and I'm I'm, uh, I'm very p pleased that we were able to do that for him as a community. Going back to other dates, you, you touched on Mike's K on October 13th. This will be the first ever Milton New England Championship wrestling event. This is a Parks and Rec event. Um, Gym Buddy Special Needs Program is going to be held at the Copeland Field House. Um, this poster is all around town. And, um, I know they're working hard on that at the Park Department. On October 25th for this board, two things on the 25th. Uh, this is Domestic Violence Month. A lot of people don't realize that. and. Uh, Domestic violence remains a significant and serious crime in this Commonwealth, and there will be a domestic violence prayer vigil at 6 o'clock on the 25th at the Parkway Methodist Church. And on the same night, um, the East Milton Neighborhood Association will be presenting their M. Joseph Manning Community Service Award at 7 p.m. at the plate at the Milton Market Boys. I just don't know who's getting it this year. It was it John didn't, Fleming it didn't last say. year. It didn't say yeah. either. I don't, I don't know who the recipient is, but. Uh, it was John Fummy from Auxiliary Fire who received it last year. On October 28th, MFE is hosting their Monster Dash, their 5K Run Walk Kids Fun Run, now in their 20th year, which begins at Cunningham Park. And the only other one, when is the, I don't, um, when is the Chambers, do we have a date on the Chambers? October 27th. Okay, October 27th yep. is, the, is, the, is the Chambers Halloween event in the square, including the deck, the, the Mac, and Another very good event. Um, I did have a meeting with the fire station building committee this week. A um, <coughs> couple of thoughts. Of what, so one of the things is they do have. A, they will be coming to us very shortly. The, the meeting with John Flynn this week. Brian Walsh is their chair to work out the language on an RFP letter that they're going to send out to um, 
locations at East Milton with anyone who may have some land they're willing to sell. Um, they're also uh, entering into discussions relative to a significant donation that may very likely be coming that would build a brand new fire headquarters. Given that aspect of it, Katie has mentioned in the past, and even though I have not seen it, I'm familiar with it, that in this, sec this area of town, um, the master plan talked about some passive use of the screen space was I, I don't you might know better than I do and I, I'm not I'm not sure if you even know but you mentioned it and since the day you said it I never forgot it but it's been on my mind now since I've heard it I haven't looked at it recently but I think it was about pop-up parks and a civic right. center idea right so I think it I know I think I know it two meetings ago that I had talked when Dr. Donio came about and I asked them in you know that if they're looking that obviously to build a brand new firehouse if they're looking to come to the town to take this some of this land you know to give it a diverse look I don't know if that would work from a school the more I've looked at it and listened I don't know if it would work put anything dense there and definitely I know the neighbors as Michael and I learned from one community meeting and they came to the meeting last night they had representation there which I was glad um, I actually kind of changed my thought now and said it might be worth worth it for them to have a discussion, to come before your committee, Katie, for Brian to come and talk about the possibility of a new fire station and how that could work with the remaining part of the whatever is left of that piece of property, filling the vision that the Master Plan Implementation Committee had. And I think given the geographic proximity, the layout of it and the and the the type of neighborhood we have, the residential nature of this neighborhood, I think that might be good for, for am I saying that right? That might be good for everyone combined to try and So I'm, I'm going to ask him to maybe, and I would even be willing to bring him to one of your committee's meetings to just kind of talk about this, because the reality, to me, each meeting, I've been at three meetings now in the past month, um, the reality of this donation is becoming more and more each day, If it's, a, but it would be a brand new fire station. And then the last thing, if this does happen, I think we as a board need to be pro proactive again in looking at if the current fire headquarters becomes available, what to do with it. I don't want to wait 10 years. Let's just at least start to think and talk about it. We could be having these discussions before, before it was even built, why it's even, um, and I think if we, show some leadership and start this discussion instead of like just waiting for it to happen and then people pour into a room and just let's try and do that you know and so that and that's that's pretty much and this the final thing and the two of you worked on this way more than I have I had a long conversation today with representative Driscoll and I thanked him for the work he did on this jet blue initiative and I know you're going to talk to this Michael so I'm gonna I'll leave it at that on the jet blue nationwide for agreeing to retrofit all of their fleet which I think it's just a smart thing, as I said to you earlier today, just on the market that they take, just in this region here, from a business perspective, a very smart thing for them to do. So um, that's it. So yeah, that's, that was one of the two things I was gonna, um, uh, and I'll, I'll just briefly um, say that um, JetBlue has announced that they're uh, plan to, re to outfit all of their um, Airbus fleet with these vortex generators that will decrease the decibels and will improve the uh, the noise. It, uh, it'll uh, their their plan is to do it uh, by the end of 2021. Um, uh, that may not be an ideal time frame, but it's something, and it's something that, um, as as uh, Richard mentioned, Representative Driscoll has worked very hard on and deserves a lot of credit. It, this board deserves a lot of credit because this board has been doing it, for, has been working on this and, and, <coughs> and pushing this for several years um, with more than one airline. Um, and Andy Schmidt, uh, the chair of the ANAC, the Airport, Airplane Noise Advisory Committee, has been pushing this is issue for several years and most recently in, in August. Um, Andy Schmidt and Katie and I uh, 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 followed up on this issue, preparing letters for JetBlue and for our, our congressional leadership and this committee approved those letters and, and Katie took the laboring oar on that and she deserves a lot of credit for that. So it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a good um, 
uh, event. It's not going to, um, it's not the final event. There's a, a lot more work to, well, yes, that's a exactly step. right. It's a step and there's a lot more work to be done. We have to, we have to um, uh, push on a lot of different avenues. We've been trying a lot of different ways, whether it be federal legislation or with um, our, our representatives, but we're gonna continue to work uh, in all of those different ways to try to improve this, but this is, this is a step. Um, and I think that should be acknowledged. Second thing, and this will be the last time that I mention this because it's happening next week, is the Milton Library Foundation um, Library Gala next Wednesday night, uh, October 17th. This is where you want to be. It's at uh, Granite Links Golf Club. Uh, we'll have um, uh, former NFL player Chris Keating. We'll have uh, um, sports, talk, sports personality and talk show host Upton, Upton Bell. Uh, we'll have great food, uh, music, um, and a lot of fun. And uh, you'll see uh, library director Will Adamzak as you've never seen him before. And um, look, just to, to come right out and say it, if you want to see me in, a, in an embarrassing situation, then uh, be at Granite Links uh, next Wednesday night and you'll have a chance to see it. So, this is um, worse than last year? Worse than last year. Worse than last year. That's all I'm going to say. People just change the channel at home. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I'm fine. You good? You sure? Katie? I don't have a report. Tell Thank me. you. I just wanted to um, touch upon uh, two things. Um, I've noticed like there's been a lot of great uh, sidewalk and um, curb work that's being continued in the town of Milton, and so I would like to thank our, our public works department for that. And one thing that I learned, because a couple of residents had reached out, um, when it comes to that curbing and sidewalk work, and then the paving of the road and the striping of the road, those three tasks, although one would think, logically, that they're done by the same contractor, believe it or not, I learned this week, are actually done by three different contractors. So to the extent that that can proactively answer some questions that may be asked, that's the reason why it doesn't happen uh, in lockstep, one, two, three. Um, the other thing, too, I, I would like to uh, uh, offer up my condolences to the Joyce family. Um, I did not know Brian Joyce individually uh, or politically, but his family and my family were former neighbors when I was growing up on Hinckley Road. And I think I speak for many in Milton uh, when I say that um, you know, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with his, his wife and his five children. Thank you. Good point. I agree, Tony. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, I am too. Um, Susan, speak response. I don't, I only have one quick, but anyone else first on, so? I know that Tony had been advocating for that um, for a long, long time. And, and I, if he kind of blindsided us with it. Um, there wasn't a lot of substance to what he had, but it's not because he didn't have it prepared. He just, he didn't have it prepared tonight. But he, this is something that he's been thinking of and he is working on this and I think that for whatever reason, he wanted to get it in tonight. Um, and so it, there's a lot more substance behind his remarks. Um, and I think it's a good stepping off point um, and something to consider. What silo it fits in, Richard, I think you spoke to a little bit, you know, whether it's uh, parks or, or capital, certainly, but I think well, it's his definitely intention. a capital. It's definitely a capital. I, I think just from what I know of the expense, haven't been involved in the high school one, just from the expense point of view. <coughs> Um, I don't think you could do it in one year. You'd have to spread it. Even if you had, I mean, you'd have to, even if it was approved tomorrow, you'd have to spread it over. You're talking several million dollars. Um, so has he been to the park? So the park officials know about this? I don't know the answer to that. Yes, yes. They do. And he's spoken <coughs> to Dembrowski, the football coach who's in support of this. He's done, to, to Selectman Barrington's point tonight, he's done a lot of, legwork behind this and they're gathering information and, and speaking to the right people. Um, he came tonight to get it on the table, I think, because he understands the governmental process of the Capital Improvement Committee receiving stuff from boards and committees. Um, I'm assuming he's gonna be on the Parks Commission agenda next Tuesday night, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, I think they meet next Tuesday the 16th. Um, and get that ball rolling so that they can he can start to get um, uh, to your point, that I don't think you can do all three fields at once um, mm. without a public-private partnership. But I, just, um, yeah. I, I think he's he he came tonight to to be on the record that this is something that the town um, 
should explore as, as a capital improvement. And again, he, he has done a lot of homework on this, both um, from other <coughs> municipalities and fields. Um, those, those of you that know him, um, know him. Those of you that don't, he's very active in Milton American Baseball. Mm -hmm. He was heading to a board meeting tonight. Milton Wildcat Football, okay. he's, he's at the fields most days um, and, and knows a lot more than um, he talked about tonight, but I think he was just here to get himself on the record and mm -hmm. kind of get, get that, that rock rolling down the hill. Because yeah, I was like, I've, David's mentioned to me, Dave Proteos has mentioned to me one of the fields. I, I didn't know the other two fields, and I think that's the first time I heard lights. I don't think I've heard, because the high school field's a million dollars, and the lights for the field, which was 20 years almost now, 20 years ago, Frank Desmond was chairman of the school committee. It was $100,000. That was 20 years ago. So these are projects that you'd have to, like, you got to get them in lanes. You'd have to step to make that. That's, that was that, like I know. I mean, he was being ambitious in his. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen. I just we came through this. This he's got to go that route. He's going to have to. I think we need. You need the park commissioners to be receptive and start to formulate a strategy as to how mm. you could do this. I'm quite confident the the math and what the maintenance savings are and replenishment of grass fields and uh, all that cost cost efficiency stuff that they'll, they'll work through and, and present very well to the Pox commissioners. Okay. That's all. I was like, to, I didn't, I didn't know the background. I didn't know. Okay. Future agenda items. And I've covered mine. So do we have anything else? We have Anybody? MPEG. We have traffic mitigation committee. We have some more Milton club one day liquor license. For the 22nd. Yep. Oh, for the 20, 20 the 22nd, 22nd, yeah. And then um, when the town meeting stuff we can put together, if you could get those agenda items in to Jennifer and myself. Um, mm -hmm. I know we don't like to put too much on there because we talk about the town meeting articles, um, but you know, I think we run it for about an hour, is it an hour before town meeting? Yes, uh, one hour six because uh, the, um, the fire station building committee, they're scheduled for Tuesday the 22nd, Are they, it, and I s suggested to them that if it was a short meeting, they could <coughs> Notify the water and get into a room and have an hour with them. So, six thirty to seven thirty. Um, we have a, a couple more if I can go through them. Go the ahead. Joint meeting with Cook and Company, um, and the school committee, um, as we work our way into collective bargaining agreements. Um, the MBTA approached us about putting a kiosk on Reed, <coughs> the corner of Reedsdale. I saw and, that. Yeah. Um, so that there's a process involved with that. They want to come in and. and make that petition to this board and um, the pilot committee. So now that we've been formalized again um, and fully seated, I think we meet next week or the week after and then come and report to this board. Um, on the corner of Reedsdale and what, Mike? Brook. Brook. Oh, Brook. Yeah. Uh, like a Charlie card machine. It's, they're putting them out on the street now on the yeah. bus routes. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. And that's all I have. Oh, and, um, President Bellotti. Yes, yeah, so would I um, talked to the sheriff briefly uh, uh, as an event with the Attorney General on Monday, uh, last week. He's served us here for 26 years and he's been an integral part. I mean, and I don't say this, I mean, especially in this building right here. DPW, I mean, he's helped us with projects. I'd like to bring him in to thank him before he assumes his role as president of Quincy College. And I just think it would be a very fitting thing to do. So if we could try to get him on the schedule for not one of the town meeting ones but maybe our next meeting he has a month left before he takes over um, okay. he's quiet but he'd like this he won't say much but I'd like to do that for him anything else anybody I have, I have two items for Go future ahead. agenda items one and this is for after town meeting but if we can just get an update I think Mike from you on the energy aggregation mm -hmm. and what the next steps are where we where we are with that and then for town meeting night, I think everyone got the email from Mike McNoser of the Fruit Center right. about the plastic bag article. I think Hillary was, at your request, Mike was reaching out to him. But we may need to talk about that okay. Monday night. There's a couple of issues that he's raised. We may need to, depending on where Hillary's discussion with him goes, we may need to so I'm, I met with him. I that. met with him yesterday, and I talked. To, he, he was going to talk with Hillary again. He does have a couple of good points that I think 
would be worthy of. So he has a couple of good ideas. Um, he may bring it as a friendly amendment to it at town meeting. Um, but I like the idea of it. So I've asked, I, actually Brian Kelly, who, who's the town meeting member who was working with him on this, I asked him today if, it, if he could email that, get that to Michael as soon as, so we can at least take a look at it, to have an idea about it. A proposed friendly amendment. A proposed amendment. friendly amendment. I, I, I did like it. I did. It was something that he found in two other communities that I didn't think, but he's gonna, I know he's going to have a discussion with Hillary about it because I wanted to hear what she thought about it because I know that she yeah. did a lot. So I think well. we should just, we'll have Tom meeting articles yeah. anyway okay. on the agenda, but we'll, we'll mm -hmm. probably have to take that up then. That was all. Thank you. Is that it? Anybody else? We're good? Motion to adjourn? Second it. So moved. Yeah, Thank you all. Beautiful. There's some things to sign there. Yeah, that, a couple here. A couple hundred.